This is the Dell Valley Broadcast Crew. My name is Daniel Chancellor, your play-by-play -play commentator, sitting alongside play-by-play -play commentator, excuse me, color commentator and producer Robert Rodriguez. Trying to get this test up and ready to run. Nine o'clock. It's on four at nine o'clock. Wow. Very good. Nine o'clock. Didn't the band like boom us out last time they were over here? They oh, used to sit right below us, but they're sitting over there this okay. time. So I'm glad they moved them. All right. I hear you. All right, Rosie. Hi, Rosie. You're new to us, so welcome to the KMAX Sports Network. More importantly, welcome to the Dell Valley broadcast crew. I am Daniel Chancellor. I will be doing play-by-play -play so you can get used to my voice real quick. I don't know how loud the band is. I'll leave it alone. Band's at 9 o'clock. Spots are at 9 o'clock. Robert and I are almost at exactly 12, about 11.50, 11.45, somewhere in there. It's time for week three, but more importantly, it is time for week one of district play. The Dell Valley Cardinals on the road before they head back home for their first home game and homecoming. But before that happens, they've got to get through the, the excuse me, the Anderson Trojans here at Nelson Field. And you're listening to it proudly on the KMAX Sports Network. My name is Daniel Chancellor alongside Robert Rodriguez. And we want to thank Rosie Bega, I believe. Hope Rosie, if, we're saying, if I'm saying your name wrong, please help me. Bega. Our QA back at KMAX Studios making sure that we are coming through and staying on the Wi-Fi waves as clearly as possible. Tonight is an important game. The Dell Valley Cardinals, some early season success. Only two games, non-district, 2-0 on the season right now, Robert. Dell Valley having to head into district play a little bit earlier than most teams in uh, not only Central Texas, but most of Texas. Uh, with it, you know, Most of the teams still have about two more weeks of non-district play to tune up their before district play starts because we know district play is actually the most important part of high school football. Important uh, important game here for Del Valley to start out district play strong. It is, it is. And this is definitely a very historical field to be playing on. So Del Valley has played here quite a few times. Success. Oh, almost fell Yeah, don't there. fall, please. <laughs> <laughs> Success will definitely be great for Del Valley here. Again, like you said, coming off a 2-0 victory. Uh, here good, we go. I said you her name said right. it. Okay, you said it right. Vega, good. All right, good. Thank you, Rosie. <laughs> hey, let's make sure. It's, it's man, I hate saying names wrong. It drives me nuts. Say it again. Vega. Vega. Yeah. You remember like Vega on the Street Fighter? Yeah. But with a B. With a B? With a Bravo. B. Vega. All right. Using a Street Fighter reference. You know we're dudes. <laughs> You remember we're nerds from, you know, back in the day? Well, speak All for right. yourself. Speak for yourself. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm pretty You're good. You're a nerd. I'm pretty good at street fighting. You're fight. a nerd. Let me find this. Uh, where is it? There it is. Type of Shack School uh, Board. Rosie, let me know uh, when you're ready to test a spot. We do need to test an interview real quick as well. Yep, yep, yep. And after that, we can go live. 7 o'clock. Hopefully seven in about 7 minutes, 6 minutes. Coach's interview is about 15 minutes Actually, long. Actually, 5 minutes. 5 minutes. Yeah, it's 15 minutes long, so we want to do a 30-minute pregame. Exactly. Okay. It's 45 seconds. Uh, yep, we can do the coach's interview first. Or we can Actually, let's test spots first. It'll be an easier transition. Spots and, uh, and radio or uh, bumper music and all that good stuff. Rosie, I'm going to go ahead and play some spots. Just let me know any adjustments need to be done. Oh, we need... Hold on. Some realtors just want to sell you a house. But at Beyond the Move Realty, they want to build a relationship for life. Because let's face it, your needs can and will change. When that happens, Beyond the Move will be there as a trusted resource to help you buy or sell your next home. 
Learn more online at btmrealty.com or stop by and see them at 411 Humphreys Drive in beautiful. Thinking about college but you don't know where to start? Austin Community College is here to help. Call or visit ACC's College Destination Center now to talk one-on-one -on -one with enrollment advisors about your goals and everything you need to get your college plans on track. It's never too early to start. Whether you want to earn a degree, train for a career, or get ahead with transfer classes, ACC offers personalized assistance with applications, financial aid, and more. Visit us at austincc.edu slash start now or call 512-223-7747 to learn more. More. ACC. Start here, get there. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. And while all of us at the KMAC Sports Network are huge football fans, we broadcast more than just football, you know. In fact, KMAC Sports proudly broadcasts volleyball, girls and boys basketball, softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and more. For more information on how you can help KMAC Sports broadcast any of those sports, just reach out to chuck at kmacsports.com or merle at kmacsports.com or contact that sports booster club directly. KMAC Sports will gladly work with you and the booster clubs to get that team's broadcasts on the air. And if you're a fan of the other team, well, we can broadcast your team's games too. We realize that, yes, even in Texas, there's more to life than just football. KMAX Sports, bringing your teams to you for 14 years. Sound off. Tell us what you think right here on Twitter, at KMAX Sports. Socialize with us. You don't have what they call the social skill. On Twitter, at KMAX Sports. Or catch us on Facebook. Search KMAX Sports. Just another way KMAX Sports is bringing your teams to you. Good evening and welcome to the Hendricks Motor Company broadcast of Dell Valley Cardinal Football being brought to you proudly on the KMAX Sports Network and presented by Super Smiles Dentistry, On The Move Realty, and ACC. I'm Daniel Chancellor, your play-by-play -play commentator, alongside Robert Rodriguez, who will be uh, chiming in and uh, getting things going up in the booth a little bit later. And, of course, we're sitting here in the press box for the post-game, or excuse me, pre-game interview uh, with head coach Charles Burton. Coach? Been a fun week. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. It's been a quick week. I'm doing well. <laughs> it's been a very quick week. Um, you guys, I think we figured out your game plan. It's win every game as close as possible just to keep the Dell Valley fans and, the, and us up in the roost screaming and <laughs> yelling and keeping the broadcast as exciting uh, as possible. I can promise you that is not the <laughs> game plan. It's turning out that way, but hopefully we fix some things and, and, and the games uh, are not as close or as exciting. For the for the fans, um, no, we like excitement. Don't get me wrong, we <laughs> we like the excitement in the game. Uh, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, of Dell Valley fans of all ages, get on your feet, strap in, get ready to go because the Dell Valley Cardinals are getting ready to come to you live right here on the KMAC Sports Network. Anderson Trojans, are they ready? That was for you, sir. Are they ready? Yeah. <laughs> Great commentary there by our color commentator, Robert Rodriguez. Rosie, on the edge of your seat commentary right there. Hope you enjoyed that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we, we were ready to go live if she likes the test. I mean, All we right. can go I'll live. Tell her, I'll actually, tell her give me five minutes. Oh, five minutes, my butt. are in the book and we're coming to you live right here from Nelson Field the Del Valley Cardinals are flying high right now going 2-0 some early season success for our Cardinals let's see if they can keep that streak going here welcome and good evening to the Hendrix Motor Company broadcast of the Del Valley Cardinal football bring brought to you proudly right here on the KMAX Sports Network and presented to you by Super Smiles Dentistry on the Move Realty in Austin Community College. My name is Daniel Chancellor. I am your play-by-play -play commentator alongside producer and color commentator Robert Rodriguez who is turning the knobs and doing everything he needs to do up here in the roost while we are on the road here at Nelson Field to make sure this broadcast keeps up and running and also bringing some insight to the broadcast as, as the game goes on. We also want to thank our QA behind the curtain 
and back at KMAC Studios making sure that we stay on the Wi-Fi waves and sounding as good as possible. That'd be Rosie Bega. We really appreciate all your help tonight, Rosie. We'll be chiming in with you a couple times tonight and thanking you for your help. Robert, uh, it's been an interesting two weeks for the Dev Valley Cardinals. Two very close games. The first win coming literally down to the last, no, ex excuse me, zero seconds on the scoreboard. Oh, a defensive yep. penalty is what kept their drive going and an opportunity for uh, Vargas, excuse me, uh, if I can get his name, Kevin Vasquez, excuse me, with the winning field goal over the McNeil Mavericks, 36-33, and then last week on the road again, this time against the Connolly Cougars up at the field, Del Valley on the ropes against their in you know in their own red zone defense stepped up big interception on the one yard line, brought it back up to the 12 with about a minute 50 left in the game. Del Valley ends up winning that game against the Cougars 26-21. So we have only had an eight point spread in victory so far with our Del Valley Cardinals. Tonight, they start the grueling task of starting district play mostly two weeks early than any other team in this country or in the state right now except for teams right here in this district, 25-6A. What do you think? Uh, how do you think the Del Valley Cardinals are going to do here tonight? I mean, the, 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 the early entry into district play, you don't get those extra two weeks to tune up and figure out what's going on with your team. How's that going to play out tonight? I'll tell you what. If we play exactly, especially on defense, the way we played last week, Going up against uh, these teams, we should have no problem at all. The defense stepped up in a big way from the first week to the second week, and if we continue to improve that way, there is no doubt in my mind we can definitely win majority of these games, if not maybe all of them. The offense has been doing some incredible things, and uh, you know, introducing the shotgun into this offense from what we're normally used to seeing such a uh, mostly run plays right and this shotgun formation especially with Washington as a quarterback has been something that uh, has excited us seeing the Del Valley team definitely doing a lot different and, and it's good change when they are able to execute this shotgun uh, plays and they are fantastic yeah Del Valley actually with a new offensive coordinator excuse me if I figure out my thoughts here Del Valley with a new offensive coordinator coming out of Hutto um, the uh, last few years offensive coordinator here at Del Valley, uh, very strong with the wing T formation that has been the foundation and the identity of this offense for the last three years now, uh, had to step aside, wanted to spend some time with his, at home with his family as a son who is dealing with autism. So, of course, he wanted to be a good father and we commend him for that and being there with his, for his son. But that brings in and opens the door for a new offensive coordinator. And this year from Hutto, bringing, uh, from the Hippos, bringing that spread style adding to the foundation of the wing T offense I think it's added definitely a, a little perspective for or not perspective but it's added the ability for Elijah Washington who has been an all district wide receiver and defensive back to step back at the quarterback position see the field and the play developing you hear me in the interview when I talk about Elijah and his ability and his instinct here in the ball game uh, on the football field with the Del Valley Cardinals it really has translated very well with his all-district play from the from the wide receiver position and defensive back position. I really like that word, translated. It has definitely done that into this new offense, and it's great bringing somebody that's got a different perspective and seeing from the outside into what a great team Del Valley is. And they have so much to offer here in their division. And again, if that defense can maintain what they did last week and do it again and just a little bit more they will definitely be the team to reckon with this season well as you can hear our crowd mic's picking up some wind and i think tonight that might be the bigger story than anything is the potential for rain here this evening uh the big hurricane system moving across the east coast uh here in the next couple of days uh as well as another tropical storm headed toward the gulf of mexico or in the gulf of mexico headed toward the coast right, right now hit houston has already been hit with a lot of rain over the last couple of days We've been getting scattered showers here in Central Texas over the last few days because of it. And tonight they say could be some pretty bad stuff. So hopefully we can get this game into it its entirety. If we do get delayed, stick with us. Be patient with us. We'll keep you entertained. Maybe even bring you last week's broadcast while we will fit through and work through any delays through the evening. But it is a rare Thursday night under the lights and we're here at Nelson Field. We couldn't be more happy to bring this game to you. But right now, before we do any more pregame 
chit chat. We got to give some love to the sponsors. Get some sponsor love. We'll give them right back to the coach's interview because it's a really, really good one. It's at about 15 minutes long, and we are approximately 20 minutes from kickoff. So if we play this right, we'll get right back in here just in time for the national anthem and to talk about what Dell Valley needs to do here against the Anderson Trojans from Nelson Field. So Cardinal fans, KMAC sports fans, don't go anywhere. My name is Daniel Chancellor. I'm alongside my partner, Robert Rodriguez. He's going to keep things going for us. We are going to give some quick love to the sponsors. Thank you, Rosie Bega, for helping us out at the QA position at KMAC Studios. Until we come back, we, will, uh, we, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. This is the KMAC Sports Network right here from Nelson Field, Cardinals versus Trojans. BMW of South Austin and Audi South Austin are proud title sponsors of Cardinal Athletics. Located near IH35 and Stastny Lane, Hendrick Automotive offers two premier facilities featuring over 500 new vehicles, along with our award-winning manufacturer certified service centers. Being focused on people by serving our teammates, our customers, and our community is what sets this dealership apart. People are our most important asset. Come ex Super Smiles Dental Center is a proud sponsor of Cardinal Athletics. We're a family-owned dental office dedicated to providing affordable, quality dental care. We accept Medicaid, CHIP, and most PPO insurance plans. We also offer 0% down and 0% financing on all dental services. We have a convenient office serving Del Valley families located at the corner of Ross Road and Highway 71. Call 512-247-6000 or go to supersmilestexas.com to make it... Some realtors just want to sell you a house, but at Beyond the Move Realty, they want to build a relationship for life. Because let's face it, your needs can and will change. When that happens, Beyond the Move will be there as a trusted resource to help you buy or sell your next home. Learn more online at btmrealty.com or stop by and see them at 411 Humphreys Drive in Butte. Thinking about college but you don't know where to start? Austin Community College is here to help. Call or visit ACC's College Destination Center now to talk one-on-one -on -one with enrollment advisors about your goals and everything you need to get your college plans on track. It's never too early to start. Whether you want to earn a degree, train for a career, or get ahead with transfer classes, ACC offers personalized assistance with applications, financial aid, and more. Visit us at austincc.edu slash start now or call 512-223-7747 to learn more. ACC, start here, get there. Good evening and welcome to the Hendricks Motor Company broadcast of Dell Valley Cardinal Football, being brought to you proudly on the KMAX Sports Network and presented by Super Smiles Dentistry, On The Move Realty, and ACC. I'm Daniel Chancellor, your play-by-play -play commentator. Alongside Robert Rodriguez, who will be uh, chiming in and uh, getting things going up in the booth a little bit later. And, of course, we're sitting here in the press box for the post-game, or excuse me, pre-game interview uh, with head coach Charles Burton. Coach, been a fun week. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. It's been a quick week. I'm doing well. <laughs> it's been a very quick week. <laughs> um, you guys, I think we figured out your game plan. It's win every game as close as possible just to keep – the Dell Valley fans and the, and us up in the roost screaming and <laughs> yelling and keeping the broadcast as exciting uh, as possible. I can promise you that is not the game <laughs> plan. It's turning out that way, but hopefully we fix some things and, and, and the games uh, are not as close or as exciting for the for the fans. Um, no, we like excitement. Don't get me wrong. We, we like the excitement in the games. Um, it's a lot of fun to call those exciting games, but yeah, a blowout or two on the you know Cardinals kicking some rear end and, mm -hmm. and a couple of blowouts would be all right. I wouldn't be too upset with that. Without a doubt, <laughs> coach. Let's talk about last week again, uh, real quickly on the road, uh, playing the Pflugerville Connolly Cougars. You're two and zero to start the season. You guys, uh, Del Valley, the last three years have done really well, uh, starting off the season with some early success. Uh, last season, starting out four and zero. This one, two and zero. Previous season, two and zero. How is the team handling this early success, the mentality of the team? How are, how are practicing going right now? Man, I, I just love talking to you. and you, you talk about stuff that I have no <laughs> idea about. I don't remember. <laughs> I remember the 4-0 no part. I don't right. remember the year before. But it's, uh, I mean, it's, you know, for us, man, it's, it's handling business. And uh, we, what we got going on right now is just 
paying attention to what's going on to us, making sure we're focused on us. And again, I know it seems repetitive and I'm saying the same thing over and over, but you know, there's, there's things that even in wins that, uh, that things that need to be corrected. And so, uh, we feel good that night. Um, we enjoy what's going on. But as a coaching staff, when you get up the next morning or sometimes you're watching video that night at 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning, um, you start to see things that need to be worked on that you know need to be fixed for you to have success uh, the upcoming week and the year. And um, Saturday morning starts or the gate the day after. So this week will be Friday. But the next morning or the next day starts that process of trying to fix yourself so you're making as few mistakes as possible. Coach, the, the guys are, you can see it in their, their body language on the field. You can feel that isn't, even though this team is young, the mentality and the, and the swagger is there a little bit. Is that transitioning over in practice, or does that just seem to be look at what we're accomplishing on the field? I, mean, I think these guys just, just I don't know if it's, I don't know if we call it a personality of the team or the aura of the team. Um, hopefully it's a culture of, of what is being built here. And, and what it is, the kids come to practice and they work hard every single day. And uh, as a coach, you enjoy being around that. Um, you know, I think players enjoy being around that because they look at each other and they understand they're here to work. And then they do work um, and they push each other. And uh, that's kind of really what's taking place. And I say, I think the success our sub varsities have had um, have helped us get to this point. You know, our sub varsities have had some wins the past couple of years. And, uh, and these kids are now not trying to find ways to win games. They, they know how to win. They're trying to make sure. And they're, trying, they're checking each other as they go along the process to ensure that they're able to accomplish their goal. Coach, one of the toughest things, I think, from the press box point of view uh, for this team is that you guys actually have to start district play a lot earlier than a lot of teams uh, throughout the state, not only Central Texas. Most guys or most teams are still looking at non-district play for two, uh, up to two more weeks. You guys are stepping into district play. And before we talk about that, what is just the simplest or not, what's the hardest part of having to prepare for district play so soon? Ah, I mean, it's, it's, you would always like another week or two to fine tune yourself um, before the game. You know, every game counts before the games really uh, predicate whether you go to the playoffs or not. Um, uh, you know, hopefully with us, you know, not doing spring ball and, uh, and, not doing spring ball and having time, having that extra week and the extra scrimmage, hopefully we're, we're better prepared for it. Um, you know, and, and I think being consistent in the systems and being consistent with coaches and uh, players understanding that, you know, they come in playing a little bit faster because they're not guessing, they're not guessing on things. And uh, hopefully that pays dividends for us. And, you know, there's, there's no way like to find out in the game uh, Thursday night. So we'll be ready to rock and roll. Well, let's recap last week's game a little bit before we talk about this uh, tonight's game against uh, the Anderson Trojans. Last week, you took on the Conley Cougars again. I think for us in the press box, the story of the night for us specifically was the defense. It seemed to be 180, well, not, maybe not 180 degrees different from week mm -hmm. one, but holy cow, Coach. You had big tackles all over the place, penetration in the backfield, interception, special teams play, fumble recoveries. You name it, you pretty much had it. Points on the board may not reflect it with the 26-21 win, but defensively, your guys, as young as they are, they were everywhere. Yeah, they were they're flying around, man, and uh, it was good to see. And those guys play like, with a certain fever, man. They, they want to hit. They want to be physical. Um, I think that's a tribute to the way that we practice. Uh, and those guys' mentality, man, and they and they enjoy it. And uh, I think our defense kind of fits the style of the kids that we have. You know, we we don't really just stay still. You know, we, uh, we you know we do a lot of movement. Our guys, you know, we kind of did something different in our approach this year to where we started that movement on the first day of, of ball instead of waiting until the you know the second week of camp. And uh, I think it's starting to show. And I think the improvement from week one to week two uh, was pretty good. And hopefully and there was still a lot, of, a lot of stuff that we could work on. So I hope that stuff has been addressed in practice this week. And hopefully we can continue to improve on. I think what we got is a good base and get better. I think one of the biggest things for us was when your defense stepped, on the, stepped up when they had to, big plays late in the game, uh, causing the turnover, and secure, ultimately securing the victory for Dev Valley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those guys, the secondary did a good job. Uh, and again, you know, we're telling the man, the best, the best pass defense is a good pass rush. So our guys were getting after the quarterback. They were making him move around. He was uncomfortable. Um, and then they were consistently hitting him. And, and nobody wants to get hit all game. 
And so, uh, you know, I think I would like to think that kind of forced them into some throws late in the game. Uh, and our guys did a good job of reacting, doing their doing their responsibility and reacting, and they were able to make plays. And uh, you know, I'm glad our DBs could catch. That's a good thing. So, uh, you know, that's kind of that's kind of our thing. Get after the quarterback. You know, hopefully they make some mistakes, and and hopefully we can capitalize. Coach, let's talk about the offense for the Cardinals a little bit. In two games, and this is nothing new if you're a Cardinal fan or if you are a Cardinal player or if you're just part of the, the, the Cardinal community, but in two games you have 567 yards rushing and five rushing touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Two passing touchdowns, 208 passing yards. Uh, you have three 200-yard rushers in your quarterback, Elijah Washington, and Tavi Dunlop with 219. Even though you guys have added the spread to the foundation that you guys have with the wing T, this hasn't stopped the running game at all. If anything, it's just confusing defenses more than anything is what it seems like. Yeah, that's you know that's what we're hoping for. You know, even though we we started to transition to a little bit of spread, the mindset was we would still be able to run the ball, and uh, that was emphasized to our O linemen. Um, that was emphasized to everybody. I think it works out well since we have a mobile quarterback, um, and, uh, and and that kind of plays into our favor. Uh, but the goal was to always be able to run the ball, and whatever they give us in the passing game, we'll take. And you know, we were kind of off last week passing game wise, but Eliza's uh, been out working hard all week. And uh, again, that relationship with receivers is going to continue to build throughout the season. Uh, and hopefully, we're able to you know to make the passes when we need to. And sometimes that's on first down, and sometimes that's on third down. But we need to get a little bit more consistent at that. And those guys worked hard to do that. I think one of the most impressive things to me about Elijah Washington at the quarterback position is his, just his pure instinct of the game. There was a couple of miscues in the last couple of weeks in the backfield with either a handoff and him just looking downfield, making plays happen with his feet, it has resulted in some beautiful highlight field for him. Yeah, I mean, he, you, know, you know, he's an athlete, and that was one of the things that even going to the spread again, yeah, it, it, you know, we didn't have the best success with it previously, uh, but right now it's, it's it's good because he hasn't had to catch up to varsity game speed. You know, being a secondary guy, varsity secondary guy, all district, being a varsity receiver guy, all district, um, he understood the play and the speed that was going to happen, and um, and he's been performing at that level, and, and hopefully he just continues to get better and better throughout the year. Well, Coach, you're uh, we're looking at – your last road game before a very short stop at home at Veterans Memorial for homecoming. But before that happens, we have to take on the Anderson Trojans here. Ed Anderson, uh, offensively, uh, a lot of people would look at them and say, well, this is their weak link in the chain. They're, they're mm -hmm. dealing with the first-year quarterback, starting quarterback in Carton Gross. Uh, big hit, though, 6'3", 195. Uh, they've got a speedy, good-sized uh, running back at 5'11", 185, who has full four speed. And again, a good size uh, wide receiver in Trevor Merrick. Defensively, your challenge with having a young defense compared to their young offense is going to feel like another chess match to me. Yeah, I mean, and we got to see who makes the most mistakes is, is what we're going to do. And hopefully we can force them into some mistakes. Uh, you know, they changed their offense up from last year. You know, they've gone kind of to a wing T team, brought in a different coordinator from Pflugerville who has done that previously. And uh, so, you know, they're going to look a little bit like us out there. Um, you know, again, hopefully we're more physical. Uh, hopefully, you know, we're more athletic and move around a little bit more, and um, and we're able to, to capitalize and, and make plays. But you know, the running back, I feel like he's been starting every, you know, for like for ever since I've been here, man. But he's a he's a good runner. He runs hard. Um, they got a fullback that's going to run tough and run physical. Uh, it should be a hard nosed game, and uh, and hopefully we're able, you know, hopefully we're able to do what we do on defense and have some success. Defensively, most people that if you read anything about this team, they're, the, they're thinking the defense is, is where they're focusing on this season and re, kind of building this team around. They have fast defensive backs, they have defensive linemen that also play linebackers, so you're looking at a lot of power as well as size uh, in the secondary. Um, offensively, you, I know that you guys aren't going to be changing much up, but uh, what do you think the biggest challenge is going to be for you guys offensively? Man, their secondary is pretty good. Uh, those guys have a cornerback that's really, really good. Uh, linebackers are active. Got an inside linebacker that's really good at reading his keys. So he's going to be hard to, to fool. Um, and so we got to make sure we're, you know, we're we're diligent. We're mixing up the snap count to keep the guys off balance. 
uh, and we're able to, you know, when, when formations dictate that we could throw the ball, um, that we throw the ball and are consistent and efficient with it uh, so we can loosen those guys up so we're able to run the ball. And again, it's, you know, it seems like a simple game plan coming from an old school defensive guy. Uh, we got to be able to run the ball to open up the pass, but that's, that's kind of changed now. You also got to be able to pass to open up the run. And, uh, and we know that, and, and that's the game plan. That'll be the game plan every single week. Uh, but the key is, to, you know, to, to take what they give us. Um, and, and sometimes formations can dictate that. So hopefully we, hopefully we have the correct formations in the playbook this week, and we line up and we, and we see looks that we feel comfortable with, um, and we're able to have some success and move the ball, not have three and outs, which is a big deal, uh, keep the ball in our possession still, uh, and score points or, or change, position, change field position when we can. Coach, you're dealing with a, a team with the Anderson Trojans with the first-year head coach. They've changed up their offense, like as you mentioned. When it comes to preparing offensively and defensively for all, basically an unknown, you've only got a couple of weeks uh, that you can look back on to kind of get a feel for them. What challenges does that have for the coaching staff in getting this team ready? Uh, I mean, again, it goes back to doing what you do, and it comes to there's only so many, there's only so much stuff systems you can run in football. And since it's the offense that we've been in now for the third year, uh, they've seen almost everything that can be thrown at them. So that gives us ample opportunity and practice to practice against it. And I think it's going to be hard pressed for somebody to surprise us with something uh, defensively that we're not able to capitalize on. And the same thing defensively. It's it's you know offenses have systems and they run it and you know their system just happens to be a little bit similar to our system now. So our guys have been seeing that. For the past two years, that's what we start camp off with, and so uh, it's not it's not really tricky in that part. It's just making sure that you've got their favorites and their tendencies down, um, so your calls or formations match that, so you're able to put yourself and your players in the best position during the game. And I and I think you know we're practicing film, no matter if it's two games. You know we go back and watch the games last year, go back and watch the games before. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we've done our due diligence and prepared and ready to go. Coach, if there could be an unsung hero award, I would have to give it to the Dell Valley Cardinal fans that have made the last two in this road trip. They were actually filling up the fan, uh, the, the visiting side of the stands pretty well, mm -hmm. making a lot of noise when the defense is on the field. Um, I, I've been really pleased with the Dell Valley fan base and showing up on these, this really grueling road grind you've got going on. Yeah, man, the, the fans the fans and parents are awesome. Uh, you know, they, they're supportive. Uh, um, you know, they show up, they do what we're asking them to do. We had the kids here early morning the other day, which is something that we usually don't do, but we had to make an adjustment on our schedule for the Thursday game, and the parents got them here. And so, uh, you know, it's good to see them there. They're yelling from the stands. It's all positive. It's, uh, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're cheering on the coaches. They're cheering on the players. They're making sure they're not getting down. Um, and that's important, and, uh, and, and we're, we're appreciative of it, and uh, hopefully we continue to have that support the remainder of this year. Well, Coach, I'm going to let you get back to it. I know you've got a lot of things to do. I appreciate your time as always. Any final words before we get, let you get out of here? No, man, I just I appreciate the parents and everybody showing up. And, uh, you know, I know I know it's three road games, and I, I know it kind of sucks that we're not at home, but uh, in due time. So please show up in droves. and. Let's have fun, and the goal is to go 1-0. and know. Let's get that done. Well, Coach, as always, best of luck going 1-0 and this week uh, against the Trojans, and uh, we'll be talking to you next week up in the press box. Appreciate you.
And a very wonderful job there done by the Anderson Trojan Marching Band playing the national anthem. Got through with the coach's interview just in time uh, to catch the national anthem. What a great interview with Coach. He brought a lot of light, I think, to this Dell Valley team, and a lot, uh, and maybe a lot of fans were wondering where this Dell Valley offense was headed, and maybe what's going to happen with this young defense. I think he answered a lot of those questions in that interview, Robert. Definitely, definitely. Coach has so much confidence in his team, and that's, of course, as a coach, he should, and well deserved. Like he talked about, the defense doing a great job, along with a lot of these guys that are that are new in their positions and everything, but. From the way they've played from the first game up until last, have done a fantastic job in improving. I think Coach has been a little bit modest on how much we saw them improve. And I look forward to see what the Cardinals can do today against the Trojans. Well, the Del Valley Cardinals have sent their captains out on the field. The coin toss has already happened. The Trojans won it and have elected to kick off. Del Valley will defend the north end zone here at Nelson Field. Your captains for the Del Valley Cardinals were number six, Chris Turner, junior defensive back, number 19, senior quarterback Elijah Washington, uh, senior linebacker Nicholas Chavez, and senior uh, offensive lineman Alexio Rodriguez. The captains for uh, the Anderson Trojans, number six, Trevor Merrick, senior <laughs> wide receiver as well as, as defensive back. Number six, Andre Jackson, senior defensive back and wide receiver. Number 21, Coy Fulmer, senior uh, running back and linebacker. This is your guy that you're going to keep your eye on in either both the secondary and the backfield for the Trojans. And last but not least, number 50, Joseph Rio, senior inside linebacker, also plays running back for the Trojans. Kickoff is ready to happen here. Number 45 for the Trojans has it teed up and ready to kick it off. And there it goes. It's a short one. Del Valley recovers it at their own 27-yard line. Has to dive to the turf to get to it. So not terrible starting field position here for the Trojans at Nelson Field, Robert. But we'll see how this offense with the combination of wing T and spread deals with a first-year head coach in this defense. And again, they've been improving more and more using that shotgun formation, something new to Dell Valley. And when they execute it, they execute it well. So let's see how well they can do it this week against the Trojans. Dell Valley starts this offensive drive in the spread. Three wide receivers, two to the near side, a single back. And Washington elects to hold on to it with the option keeper. He's got some blockers in front of him. He crosses the 40, the 45, and the 50. Finally gets shoved out of bounds here on the Anderson side of the field at the Anderson 49-yard line. That was a tremendous run of about 23 yards. Make that about 22 yards for Elijah Washington. My gosh, I just saw some fantastic blocking there. Yeah. Great run by Washington, of course. Nothing less but great blocking again by the Dell Valley Cardinals. Looks like uh, we had a hold on the field against Del Valley. So too well of blocking. To the, yeah, too well of blocking. That's going to happen back at the line or back at the spot of the foul, which was the, at the first, uh, the original actually about the original ten yard, uh, the first down marker. So it looks like Del Valley is actually just going to start basically back at the original line of scrimmage. So first, uh, yeah, make that second and ten from about the 29 yard line. So again with the spread offense, trips here to the near side. Dunlop offset to the right of Washington and Washington again holding on to the run, holding on to the ball I should say, gets up to the 30, finally gets shoved out of bounds. So about a yard, maybe a yard and a half gain there for Washington. Now unfortunately about that 22 yard gain is negated by the holding call, but Robert, big thing about Elijah Washington our, our quarterback is the, also our leading rusher right now. 200, uh, unofficially, 223 yards before tonight's game on the ground. And being a great mobile quarterback that he is, I would expect nothing less. The shotgun formation again. Yeah, four wide this time, two to either side. Again, Dunlop offset to the right of Washington. This is second and long, looking for throw, and he does, and on the far side, caught by none other than Caleb Burton who's going to catch it for about a six yard gain going to bring up third and short for the Cardinals so far Caleb Burton as a freshman has done some great things here so, uh, with the Dell Valley Cardinals and I'm sure he'll continue to improve as a wide receiver probably just about anywhere they put him on this field 
but has had some fantastic catches so far in these past few games. Caleb is the leading receiver for the Cardinals so far after two weeks. Third and two here, actually about a third and a long one is what we're looking at as they come back out in the spread. Three wide, two to the near side. Dunlop directly behind his quarterback in the pistol. There's this, the handoff to Dunlop. Oh, again, Washington decides to hold on to it, calls his own number, gets the first down, and a couple of yards more up to about the 43-yard line. Great run, of course, by Washington. The Trojans were there for the stop, but not without getting a few yards for the Del Valley Cardinals. Right now, the Trojans playing a little bit on their heels, except for the penalty. The Del Valley Cardinals have been moving forward on every play. Again, the spread, three wide, two to the near side. Dunlop offset to the left of Elijah Washington. And this time, Dunlop gets his number called, shakes off the would-be tackler, rumbles ahead to the 49-yard line, and that's going to bring up second and about three for the Cardinals. Now, those are the shotgun plays that are executed very nicely. You saw the snap, the pass off, the run with some yards, of course. Dunlop doing a great job. We like the way he runs, very strong as a runner but executed very nicely by the Del Valley Cardinals. Nine and a half minutes left here in the first quarter. Del Valley is on their own 49. It's second and three. Spread trips to the far side and Washington calls his own number, crosses the 50 up to the 48 hit, moves forward up to the 45 and that'll be good for another Del Valley first down. Very nicely done. Again, great run by Washington. Moving the chains. I, I have to say, as many times as we've been here to Nelson Field, they used to put the band right below this booth. Yeah. They moved the band down a little bit. I am appreciative of that because they're not blowing out our uh, crowd <laughs> mic like yeah, they usually crowd, do. Crowd mic picks up some some great band music. The there. band's great. Don't get us wrong, but man, it's nice to have them move down just a little bit. Three wide again, moving to uh, the near side from top to bottom. And the handoff on the delay goes to Dunlop, bringing it to the near side, crosses the 45 up to the 30. He's up to the 20. No one's going to touch him. Five touchdown, Del Valley, with 8.37 on the clock. Del Valley Cardinals strike first. Dunlop with a nice long carry. And Del Valley six. Anderson Trojans, nothing. Extra point try coming up. Of course, very nicely done by this duo here so far, executing that shotgun play. Very nicely done. Washington handing off, handing off the ball very well. Timing is everything right now, and time perfect early for a touchdown. Option is keeping Anderson Trojans confused. I, I know that our foundation is the wing T, but right now the spread is working. You don't fix what's not broken. Coach, Definitely. keep the spread going. Extra point is up and good. So our Del Valley Cardinals with a seven-point lead over the Anderson Trojans. Seven-nothing here from Nelson Field. We'll keep it right here at Nelson while Robert gets everything caught up on the scoreboard for our, our KMAC listeners. What a tremendous drive. Del Valley got caught with the one holding call. Never stopped moving the ball forward. Fantastic job tonight by the or so far by the Del Valley Cardinal offense showing what they can do after two weeks of tune-up and going 2-0 and in non-district play. I do have to say that I'm not going to say relaxed, but they looked very focused I would during this that. drive. Very nicely executed every play, you know, other than the penalty that they drove first play. Nicely done. Handoff was well, like I said. Of course, Dunlop doing a fantastic job. Running right up. Stayed straight. Great run, great plays. Washington and Dunlop, very nicely done. That was basically an entire drive, well, one catch by Caleb Burton, but other than that, it was all legs by Washington and Dunlop. Washington using and calling his own number, reading the defense very nicely, you know, exploiting the holes, and when he saw that Dunlop was obviously the better carrier in that situation, had no problems handing the ball off on those, uh, those quarterback options. So. I, I think that right now the uh, the new offensive coordinator that the Del Valley Cardinals have brought in from Hutto is he's been watching some film on this team. No matter who, how many weeks they have a, had a new coach and a new offense, this offense is is killing this uh, Trojan defense early. Call it what you will, smart football, you know, uh, film, but nonetheless doing a fantastic job. The kickoff by our Del Valley Cardinals gets caught at the 21-yard line. Fair catch called. And uh, that is where the Anderson Trojans will start this offensive drive with 8.31 left on the clock here in the first quarter. And Del Valley Cardinals lead at 7-0. 8.31, time seems to be flying. Yes, Man. sir. 
tonight is a little cooler than you know yeah, getting into the football season. A little overcast, but let's see if it can hold out. I'm hoping it does. So home, far, this will be a good game. The home side press box is on the west side of the stadium, so we can look to the east there and you know look toward the coast. And if you're paying attention to the weather, you know it's headed this way to Central Texas, and we're hoping that it stays away long enough to get this game completed tonight. Hopefully. It doesn't affect too much Central Texas football tomorrow night, Friday night under the lights, as we are Thursday nights under the lights here for uh, Del Valley Cardinal football. The first play from scrimmage for the Anderson Trojans is a rumble ahead for about three yards, bringing up second seven. Of course, it's me being a defensive fan, I look forward to seeing what Del Valley can do tonight. Well, here comes the offense for the Trojans. Quarterback number 10, Scott DeBois, DeBois excuse me, under center, hands it off again, rumbles forward. It's going to be close to a first down, being about a yard and a half short. Third and short coming up, 7.52 left to go here in the first quarter. And the Anderson Trojans looking for their first first down of the ball game. Del Valley making it tough for Anderson to definitely move the ball so far. A couple of plays making them work for their yards. There's that wing T style offense for the Trojans and a handoff up the middle. Big running back, number 33, Hondrick Givens, rumbles forward and gets three yards. They needed they needed three, they got three. So a Trojan first down keeps the drive going with 7.20 left to go here in the first quarter. Wouldn't be surprised if the coach for Anderson saw film as well and said, man, we need to run this defense down in order for us to have a chance. Now into the spread offense, the Trojans with trips to the top. Going south to north, it's a delay handoff. Running back takes it to the far side in between the hashes up to the 50-yard line, and that's going to be about a 14-yard gain for the Trojans on the legs of Jackson Green, their senior. Uh, it shows him to be, uh, was that 20 or 21, Robert? I believe it was on 21. The carry. 21, excuse me. That would be Corey Fulmer. That is that senior running back, 5'10", 185 with 4'4 speed. He's not only got a good frame, but he's got speed to go with it. Good spin move on the end. Del Valle did stop him. Back under center into the wing tee, and the handoff goes up the middle again. Number 33, Trondrick Givens. Going to get about maybe two yards on that carry. That will bring up second and eight with six and a half minutes left in the first quarter, and the Trojans are on the Dell Valley side of the field, setting up on the Dell Valley 48. Did I mention time is flying by in this it first quarter? moving right now. I think the, both these teams realize night. what they're trying to not only beat each other, but they're also trying to beat the weather. I, I, that's what I was just about to say. I believe the weather is the biggest factor right now, too. Big fullback there for the Trojans, and that is who's been getting the brunt of the heavy lifting here as the handoff goes to Fulmer on the delay. He's going to cross over to the Dell Valley 43-yard line, and that'll be good for a first down. They needed to get to the Dell Valley 40, and I'll ex I apologize. It'll be Dell Valley 38. Nicely they needed done. to get to the Dell Valley 40. Good, good tackle by Anthony Key. Knew that he had to tackle him low. Very nicely done again. Defense trying to get their groove going in this series. Del Valley defense, like you said, trying to find that groove. Right now the Trojan offense exploiting a defense that should be very used to seeing what they're seeing. And here comes the wing T again. Very quick handoff to the big fullback. Givens again. Givens seems to be the first down back. Gets the short, harder downs. He's going to get about four and a half on that one. So it's going to be about second and six. And then Fulmer comes in with the big seven, eight, nine yard carry. So it seems to be use the battering ram, weaken up the defense, and then send the guy through the cracks. Hopefully Del Valley defense will catch on to this pattern and make a big play. Under center again, and another handoff. A quick on the end around there on the uh, fly sweep. Tackled out of bounds all the way up to the Del Valley 21 yard line, so they're knocking on the red zone. Trojans with great, great penetration on this drive. Nice tackle though there towards the end by defensive back. Let's see, Chris Reed, junior for Del Valley. This is that young defense for Del Valley. No returning starters from last season. A lot of guys who saw playing time, but no starters. But you've seen when they get in these situations where they step up big, see if they can do it here. Another quick handoff to the battering ram. Givens as he's going to rumble ahead for about four yards inside the red zone up to the Del Valley 17-yard line. Keeping Del Valley defense on their toes, moving it left and right, up the middle, 
Kind of don't see too much of a pattern here. There is one, but still trying to change it up. Dell Valley is doing their best right now to hold off Trojans. Now, just so you know, Robert Scott, Del Bosque, uh, the young man playing quarterback, is mm -hmm. also listed as a linebacker. Wow. And I can a see lot. it. A handoff on here to the near side, comes to the near hashes. It is to the end round. Oh, big stiff arm up to the five, finally goes out of bounds. Joy Barron, the sophomore running back, gets his number called for the Trojans. Big run. That's going to be good for a first down up to the Dell Valley five, first and five. And now the Trojans are knocking on the door. Again, Chris Reed with the tackle. Reed doing some good job flying all over the field for the Cardinals. Right now, looking for this uh, Cardinal defense. Need a good goal line stand here. I formation. The handoff goes to Fulmer. He got a door opened up by the battering ram and straight into the end zone on a touch. So from five yards out, Fulmer will tie, or no, won't tie things up, but we're just an extra point try away from a tie ball game here at Nelson Field. Del Valley seven, Anderson Trojan six, 4.05 left to go in the first quarter. Extra point try coming up. This could be the making of a shootout today. Yes, sir, it could. Both these teams realize, hey, this is district play. We got to start district play strong. We cannot go into the next week playing. Del Valley definitely doesn't want to go home playing homecoming with a loss in district. They definitely need to, uh, they're looking to finish this game strong. So we both now know on offense who's going to be the people that are the players that are going to be making these plays, doing fantastic things, of course, running the ball and everything. Let's see which team changes it up first to make, you know, something happen. As you can tell by the side of the crowd, Mike, here on the home side in the press box, the Trojans' extra point attempt is good, so we have a tied ball game here at Nelson Field. 4.05 left to go here in the first quarter. My name is Daniel Chancellor alongside Robert Rodriguez producing and color commentating. We want to thank Rosie Bega back at KMAX Studios, making sure that we stay on the Wi-Fi waves and sound as good as possible for everyone. We want to remind everyone to please check out our sponsors. Our sponsors are what make these broadcasts possible each and every year. Hendrix Motor Company, Super Smiles Dentistry, uh, be, uh, what uh, I believe it is, uh, not Beyond the Moves, Beyond the Move. Uh, yes, Beyond the Move Realty, and of course, Austin Community College, all fantastic sponsors. Check out each and every one of them. Uh, everyone has a Facebook page or social media page. Everyone has a web page. So just do a Google search. See what any of these patrons can do for you or uh, these sponsors can do for you. So please check them out. We will be giving to uh, some love as much as possible throughout the broadcast. And it's things have been flying by here so far. Unable to really take a commercial break. So we'll see what happens as the Anderson Trojans have things teed up and ready to go. Ready to kick this off for the Trojans. Great game so far. Like I said, back and forth. Yeah. Got a number 45 for the kicker. I don't have a 45 on the roster for the Trojans, so here it is from the 40. It's a low line drive kick. Gets caught at the 24-yard line. Now brought up to the 30. First contact made and tripped up at the 32. Really nice return there by Jacob Lopez, junior wide receiver for the Dell Valley Cardinals. Taking a low hit that gets up nicely, jots off the field, and he's good to go. Yes, great run by Jacob Lopez again. So here comes uh, the Dell Valley offense. Great offensive drive on their last possession, on their first possession, and they want to duplicate it here as they break huddle into the spread. Three wide, two to the top. Dell Valley north to south. Dunlop offset to the right. He gets his number called, gets hit in the backfield, and gets dropped by two Trojans. About, uh, it's going to be about a five-yard loss. Good read there by the defense for the Trojans. Coach is uh, very impressed with Dunlop's running ability. We talked off the interview, and he, I asked him, I said, Coach, do you ever get you know, concerned about his running style because he is such a straight-up runner? He goes, you know, sometimes I am, but then I watch his highlight films, and he showed me three little quick highlight films from last week's game against Connolly where he just trucked three guys in one play, and he goes, and this is why I don't get concerned. He's 190 pounds. He can take it. 
and a handoff again to Dunlop, and there he goes, proving it. He makes up those deficit yards. He's only two yards away from a first down. So from second and 15, Dunlop gets his number called again, and he makes 13 yards up, second and short, or third and short coming up for the Dell Valley Cardinals with just under three minutes to go here in the first quarter. Dell Valley will be lining up on their own 41-yard line. Again, you're just talking about Dunlop and such great ability he has running the ball and so far doing some great things like you said close to a first down just shy of it shotgun again for the cardinals two to the top dunlop offset to the right gets his number called rumbles ahead breaks a tackle stiff arms the second would be gets enough for the first down on forward progress up to the 45 the whistle blows the play dead and the Del Valley Cardinals with the first set of downs and 2.24 left to go here in the first quarter. This game's tied up 7-7 against the Anderson Trojans. A lot of teams should be worried on how strong of a runner Dunlop is. Somebody they definitely need to keep an eye on. And man, he runs great. Such power right there with about four players trying to tackle him down. Again, great run by Dunlop. Spread formation again. Dunlop making some changes on his wide receiving core, bringing two to the near side. Dunlop offset to his right. Here's the snap, and the number gets called for Dunlop. Holding, or a flag comes in late. I'm assuming it's going to be a holding call. Back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a few inches past for the Cardinals on the legs of Dunlop. The Trojans read that one pretty good. It is going to be a holding call going against the Bell Valley Cardinals. This will be their second penalty of the game. Last week, penalties was a problem uh, again for the Cardinals. The previous week, they had 10 penalties for 105 yards. Last week, eight penalties for 85 yards. So penalties, they're looking to wrangle that issue in real quickly for the Dell Valley Cardinals because that's going to make or break a ball game real quick when you give up almost a football field or more every game. After the penalty, first and 20, spread formation, three wide, two to the top. Pistol formation and a high snap. The call, no, and it's a dump off to the tight end on the far side. Up to the 50, back to up to the first down marker. Finally gets shoved out of bounds about two yards past it. What a great call there by the offensive coordinator for your Dell Valley Cardinals. Dumping it off to John Bracken, senior tight end. Big play there for the Cardinals. <laughs> Big play indeed. Very nicely done by the tight end. John, big John. Running it down the field for the first down. Cardinals, let's keep going. Cardinals on the Trojan 45. 118 on the clock. It is stopped. The snap, the hold, excuse me, the, the uh, delay handoff goes to Dunlop on the far side. He's going to get about two yards. That'll start the clock back up. Tied ball game here, 7-7 in the first quarter. Just about a minute left to go. And the Dell Valley Cardinals on the Trojan side of the field looking at a second and eight. Hello. I said let there be <laughs> light and there was. Dell Valley Cardinals break huddle, spread again, three wide, trips to the near side. There's going to be a flag on the play, and this is going to blow it dead. That is going to be uh, offsides on the defense. Actually, we're going to get a timeout called by the Trojans. We might have got it called just before the uh, offsides penalty was caught. So with that timeout, we'll take one with them. We hope you guys are enjoyed the broadcast so far. You're listening to it proudly right here on the KMAC Sports Broadcast, KMAC Sports Network from Nelson Field. It's a tied ball game, Del Valley 7, Anderson 7. BMW of South Austin and Audi South Austin are proud title sponsors of Cardinal Athletics. Located near IH35 and Stastny Lane, Hendrick Automotive offers two premier facilities featuring over 500 new vehicles, along with our award-winning manufacturer certified service centers. Being focused on people by serving our teammates, our customers, and our community is what sets this dealership apart. People are our most important asset. Come Follow all the game day action right on our Twitter feed at KMAX Sports.
Welcome back to the KMAX Sports Network. This is the Hendricks Motor Company broadcast of Dell Valley Cardinal football, and we are very happy to be bringing it to you. I'm Daniel Chancellor alongside Robert Rodriguez, and of course, Rosie Vega back at KMAX Studios, making sure we sound as good as possible and keeping the stream going on the Wi Fi waves. Timeouts over, tied ball game. 38 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Dell Valley Cardinals. Three wide trips in there, near to the near side. A delay handoff goes to Dunlop. He breaks three shoestring tackles, get all the way up to the Trojan 28 yard line. Loses a helmet, so he'll have to come up for at least one play. But another big first down run for Dunlop and showing his incredible strength breaking those three tackles. When you say he's the workhorse, you know, or the person doing. Most, he is definitely that. Fantastic runner so far, doing great things for Del Valley. Man, Dunlop is such a strong runner again. This is somebody that the rest of these football teams, their district, are going to have to keep an eye on. That's going to bring the first quarter to an end. They decide not to run another play after one here at Nelson Field. Everything's knotted up seven apiece. Twelve minutes are on the clock. They're about to slip, switch sides. Robert, uh, it seems like right now both defenses are playing on their heels. Uh, the spread offense, ironically, is working better for the Dell Valley Cardinals. The wing T offense, which our defense should be able to pick apart and see what's coming at them since our offense has mainly been a wing T offense for three years. Uh, struggling a little bit like, with the Trojans. This is one of those crazy, so far, back and, uh, back and forth football games. I think they're almost just enjoying themselves, you can say, playing football out there you know and they have and should know what's coming at them but again these are a lot of players that are getting into a new form of offense and some even coming off we talked about it before brand new to the defense as starters so again small adjustments can be made but they should know what's coming at them with that offense from the Trojans. Well, they have switched sides. They have put 12 minutes on the clock. The Del Valley Cardinals after that huge run from Dunlop to end that first quarter to get this next set of downs. They're set up on the Trojan 28 yard line. Del Valley now going south to north, break the huddle in the spread. Three wide, two to the far side. Dunlop had to come off the field for one play because of losing the helmet. It is a throw behind his intended target, Caleb Burton. And uh, second or third pass today for Elijah Washington. Unfortunately, falls short and behind his intended uh, intended target. Second and ten coming up for Del Valley. 11:56 on the clock. Again on the Trojan 28-yard line. They break huddle, spread formation, two to the far side, single wide receiver and Caleb Burton here to the near side. Dunlop offset to the right and gets his number called on the delay handoff, spins out of, tries to spin out of the tackle. He's gonna get about a yard and a half on the carry, which is gonna bring up third and long for the Del Valley Cardinals with 11.45 here to go in the second quarter. Dunlop definitely sniffed out on that run, but always makes a good comeback after something like that. Third and long coming up. Big down here for the Cardinals. Shotgun formation. Five wide. Empty backfield. Trips to the far side. Washington takes the snap from the shotgun. The screen pass to the far side. Blockers in front. Scrambling forward and trying to keep his knee off the turf. He's going to come up about a yard short up to the 20. Make that about at the 20 and a half. But the Dell Valley Cardinals, nice little screen pass there. Caught by Reggie Sims, senior wide receiver. You know, it's funny because we've been broadcasting several years up here in the booth for Dell Valley. And one thing that we've seen over the years is Dell Valley. That is something that they've kind of struggled with their defense. And now they're adapting and changing it up. So that way... You know, they're able to execute a nice screen pass there and did it quite well. Del Valley going for it here on fourth and short. Fourth and two, three wide, two to the near side. Single back and Dunlop behind Washington in the pistol. 
And a miscommunication in Washington trying to scramble for it. We have a flag coming in by the head zebra. So it looks like we're going to have a holding call potentially here. And that is what it is against Del Valley. More than likely would have been a first down. Washington was able to scramble, but the holding call is going to negate it. So that will back Del Valley up, bringing up fourth and long. We'll just have to see where the hold happened and see where now yeah, holding. Okay, I see what they did here. So Washington didn't quite make it to the first down marker, so the Trojans have elected to, to uh, decline the holding call. So a turnover on downs for Dell Valley will give the Anderson Trojans starting field position from their own 19-yard line. That sure looks close to a first down mark for me if that's where they spotted that ball. But apparently it means a first down for the Trojans. 10-18 left to go here in the first half. Tied ball game. Wing T offense for the Trojans. And a handoff on the near side here. Coming around, it's Fulmore. He gets tripped up at about the 23-yard line and finally hits the turf at the 24. So that is going to be about a four-yard gain for the Trojans. Make that a five-yard gain, bringing up second and five with 10 minutes left to go in the first half. Anthony Key with a nice stop there. Key again, man. You've called his name like five times already, Robert. Here comes the Trojan offense again. The handoff to the battering ram. He rumbles forward for maybe a half a yard. The defense doing a good job for the Cardinals, even though that big body of uh, Givens, three. Del Valley Cardinals coming in, stopping him with a minimal gain. This will bring up third and five with nine and a half minutes left to go here in the first half. Again, things are all tied up here, seven apiece. Del Valley on the road for their third road game to start this season out next week we'll, we'll be back at veterans memorial for homecoming handoff to fulmer and he's pushing the pile forward that you expect the battering ram of gibbons to do it but fulmer actually able to do it he needed five he got six and a half so a first down for the trojans with nine minutes left to go here in the first half Not too many games here uh, being played on a Thursday night, but we will find some scores for you for any games that are being played and bring them to you as quickly as possible. So stick with us here. We will also give you a halftime report while the bands are playing. It is a rare Thursday night into the lights. Under the lights of Nelson Field, another run by the Trojans will result in a short run of about a yard and a half, bringing up second and long with 8.24 left to go here in the first half. Again, Coach putting tremendous confidence in his defense, and they've been able to do some, some good things so far, only allowing seven points on the board. Both teams, again, only scoring seven points. Eight minutes left in the second quarter. Wing T offense again. There's the snap, the quick handoff to Givens. Givens lowers his shoulder and rubs, rumbles ahead, excuse me, for about five yards. That'll bring up third and about three and a half for the Trojans, trying and just slowly inching their way toward, uh, toward Cardinal territory now on their own 39-yard line. The handoff, a quick one goes to Givens. He bounces off a couple of blockers. He gets enough for a first down, finally gets taken to the turf, but not until he gets up to the Trojan 43. Chris Reed again with a good stop there. Help leading his defense, pushing back the Trojans. Del Valley Cardinals defense trying to stop him here. First and 10 for the Trojans, 7-10 on the clock. Well, single wide receiver, and there's the handoff going around the far side again to call his number for the second time today. That's Joey Barron. He gets up to the 50 on about a six-yard scramble, and that'll bring up second and four for the Trojans with just under seven minutes left to go. Anthony Key again with a fantastic tackle. He has been everywhere. He's been assisting. He's been making solo tackles. He's been 
you, uh, the only thing he needs to do next is recover a fumble and interception, maybe run one of those back for a touchdown. So far, Anthony Key, if I'm not mistaken, has had about four tackles this game. Fantastic oh. wins. The battering ram Givens gets the handoff. He rumbles ahead and needs uh, about four, and it looks like they're going to spot him about four. So he may have enough for a first down for the Trojans, and it's also going to put him in Del Valley, ter Del Valley territory. Excuse me up to the Del Valley 46 yard line and gonna call for a measurement. Got a little Charles Barkley going there, territory. Territory, because it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> oh, I can't, I, I, it's a. <laughs> this is what happens when you have a Thursday night under the lights. You get bad jokes, uh. and <laughs> tongue twisters, and here comes the measurement. couple of Trojan fans think they've already got it. They put the stick down and a half the ball past the stick. So it is a first down for the Anderson Trojans here at Nelson Field at the Dell Valley 46 yard line with 623 left to go here in the first half and a tied ball game at seven apiece. Trojans break huddle, wing T, single wide receiver to the far side. The snap, a quick handoff to Givens. Givens taking, on, taking down low and gets about a four-yard gain. That will bring up second and six with just about six minutes left to go. Del Valley's learned real quick that they can't take Givens up high. That big full black body of his, he's he's definitely uh, – man, I, 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 I don't even know if I can think of a fullback that carries that, you know, has that kind of frame right now that uh, I don't know he's he's doing a good job but Del Valley learning how to stop him again man in motion from top to bottom this time it is going to be Fulmer Fulmer with the carry and up to the Del Valley 32 yard line before getting shoved out of bounds and that'll be good for another Trojan first down this time on the uh, sweep to the near side to the Trojan side of the field Trojans at five and a half minutes to go in the first half here. Moving the ball pretty effectively against our Cardinal defense. Joey Barron, sophomore running back who's had his number called a couple of times here tonight and been successful coming off the field. Not looking too good. Hopefully that young man will be okay. Here comes the snap and again the handoff to Givens. Tackled from behind, but not before he gets about a six-yard gain on the play. So second and six coming up for the Trojans. Five and a half minutes to go. The Trojans trying to inch a little closer to that Del Valley red zone, uh, pitching up here at their own 20, or pitching up at the Del Valley 27-yard line. Number 54, Andres Gomez. We've called his name there. a lot so far the last two weeks. Here comes another quick handoff to Givens, and Givens, the workhorse here, rumbles ahead. He needed six, he got eight, up to the 20. So now knock it on the red zone. Five minutes left to go here in the first half. Trojans again, just methodically moving the football against our Cardinal defense. It seems that both teams are actually giving each other more than what they expected. Here comes Fulmer again on the near side on the sweep. There's a flag coming in late. That's probably going to be a holding call against the Trojans. He gets taken down at the 10. So it would be good enough for a first down, but we're going to see. Yep, there it is. It's a holding call. It's going to happen right back at the line of scrimmage. So that first and 10 run will actually become a first and 20, negating the first yard run or first down run. Saw it over here on the near side. Oh, did you? <laughs> I didn't see the hold. I just saw the flag out of my peripheral as I was watching Fulmer run up the sidelines. So. Do have a couple of scores from around the area. Pflugerville is defending their home turf against Elgin. This will be the Pflugerville Panthers. And right now in the second quarter, we have a 14-7 lead for the Panthers. Weiss has traveled to Rouse. This one's fun. Second quarter, 24-13. Uh, Rouse leading that one. And Glenn and McCallum all knotted up at 14 apiece. We'll get you more scores here in a little bit as the Trojans again with the quick handoff up the middle again to Givens. And Givens gets stopped behind the line. They haven't done this too much to this tonight so far. But that's going to result in about a one-yard loss. A flag coming in late. Not sure what the flag's going to be for. Del Valley says that they recovered a fumble. 
Waiting for the official call here. We also have a flag coming in very late. Here comes the head referee to tell us what the call is. Del Valley sent out their offense. They're not messing around. They are the, under the impression that they have recovered this football. So it's a chop block going against the Anderson Trojans. It is declined by the Del Valley Cardinals. Fumble recovery by the Del Valley Cardinals defense, which gives this offense with four minutes left to go here in the first half. Another opportunity to extend this lead or, or get back into the lead, I should say. Del Valley setting up on their own 32-yard line, breaks the huddle, spread formation, empty backfield, trips to the top. Washington, shotgun. Gets the snap, looks to his left, throws to his left. Caught by Caleb Burton, who's up to the 40. Gets shoved out of bounds. That's going to stop the clock, and it's only going to be about two yards shy of a first down. You know, I, I didn't hear in the, in the interview, excuse me, that you had mentioned about the interception in my two waters. Oh, <laughs> well, just so you know, your two waters are in the truck and on ice. I have fulfilled my end of the bargain. Again, with the spread formation and an empty backfield for Elijah Washington, Trips to the top, and when whistle blows this one dead before it can get started, timeout called by the Trojans. Let's take one with them. With 3.55 left to go here in the first half, we have an exciting ball game coming to you here from Nelson Field and proudly on the KMAC Sports Network. Tied up at seven apiece, the Del Valley Cardinals and the Anderson Trojans will be right back. Super Smiles Dental Center is a proud sponsor of Cardinal Athletics. We're a family-owned dental office dedicated to providing affordable, quality dental care. We accept Medicaid, CHIP, and most PPO insurance plans. We also offer 0% down and 0% financing on all dental services. We have a convenient office serving Del Valley families located at the corner of Ross Road and Highway 71. Call 512-247-6000 or go to supersmilestexas.com to make it a... Sound off. Tell us what you think right here on Twitter at KMAX Sports. Welcome back to the Hendricks Motor Company broadcast of Del Valley Cardinal Football brought to you proudly right here on the KMAX Sports Network and presented by Super Smiles Industry, Beyond the Move Realty and ACC Community College our Austin Community College, five wide again, trips to the top, empty backfield, Elijah Washington with a quick snap and a screen over to the far side, caught, knocks off a would-be tackler at the 50-yard line and into Trojan territory all the way up to the 38-yard line. Fantastic reception by Reggie Sims on that one. Usually a screen is good for about five or six yards, but this time Reggie was able to break that one wide open. Tackler came in from the secondary position and Reggie just lowers his shoulder, trucked him, and gets all the way up to the Trojan 38-yard line. Big first down there for the Dell Valley Cardinals. Keeps the clock going. Three and a half minutes left to go here in the first half. Trips again to the near side, two to the far. Washington, empty backfield. Puts a man in motion from the near to far side. And on the sweep, hands it off and he's going to get about a three maybe a four yard carry that's Reggie Sims on the wide receiver sweep there keeps the clock going Del Valley knows that they're getting closer and closer to field goal territory but wanting to get pay dirt with the touchdown second and about six here just under three minutes to go here in the first half Five wide, trips to the near side. Washington in the backfield all alone. The snap, the quick screen pass, and the whistle blows this one dead before he gets started. Reggie Sims again was going to be the target on that one. Looked like he had blockers in front of him again. We'll see what the call is. It should be, might be a false start. It should be blowing this one dead the way they did. Head Zebra. It is going to be a false start going against, unfortunately, our Del Valley Cardinals. So second and six will become second and 11. 2.49 here to go in the second half. Excuse me, first half. I'm trying to speed this one well uh, way up. It's bad enough. The clock is going really I know, fast. Right? 2.49 here to go in the first half. Tied ball game at seven apiece. Trips to the near side. Two wide receivers to the top. 
Caleb Burton and Jacob Lopez are your two wide receivers to the top as Elijah Washington gets the snap. Looks to his left, rolls to his left. Looks like he's going to use his feet and does. He's up to the 40, has a blocker, up to the 30. Now goes out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. Should be good enough for a Dell Valley first down. Actually, they're going to mark him about a yard short. So second and 11 will become third and one. He does get out of bounds, stops the clock at 239. Great run again by Washington. It gets negated by another but penalty it, by the Dell Valley Cardinals. Negated. Penalties have been probably the biggest negative that the Cardinals have faced all season so far in the Lyle in these three weeks. And if they can seal up those fundamentals, then this ball team is going to be very, very dangerous. Block in the back goes against the Dell Valley Cardinals. That's going to bring them all the way back to the Trojan 49-yard line. So you're looking at about second and, what is that, 20? 239 to go here. Shotgun, trips to the top, the snap. Washington throws to his right and off the fingertips of his would-be target, Michael Flores, senior wide receiver, watched it come in. I think he heard the footsteps and brought the hands down just a little too fast. Off the fingertips, incomplete pass. Definitely. Would have been a great one, just barely missing the pass. Of course, Washington has the, uh, the arm, excuse me, has the arm, just wasn't quite, quite there with the catch. 2.32 to go here in the first half. Tied ball game at seven apiece. Third and 22 for the Del Valley Cardinals. They break huddle. Dunlop offset to the right of Washington, moves him to the left side. Three wide to the top and Del Valley wants to talk about it. That is going to leave them with two timeouts with uh, 2.32 left to go. We'll take one more timeout with them, and uh, depending on how it goes, we'll probably just keep it here until halftime. But until then, don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Hendricks Motor Company broadcast of Dell Valley Cardinal Football proudly on the KMAX Sports Network. Thinking about college but you don't know where to start? Austin Community College is here to help. Call or visit ACC's College Destination Center now to talk one-on-one -on -one with enrollment advisors about your goals and everything you need to get your college plans on track. It's never too early to start. Whether you want to earn a degree, train for a career, or get ahead with transfer classes, ACC offers personalized assistance with applications, financial aid, and more. Visit us at austincc.edu slash start now or call 512-223-7747 to learn more more ACC start here get there sound off tell us what you think right here on Twitter at KMAX Sports welcome back to Nelson Field and the KMAX Sports Network the timeout is over with 232 left to go here in the first half Del Valley, Dunlop offset to the left of Washington. Two wide receivers at the top. The snap, pressure coming, screen pass caught at the 50. Good blockers in front, up to the 45, in between the hashes, and taken down at the Trojan 26-yard line. Tremendous catch and run by Reggie Sims, senior wide receiver for the Del Valley Cardinals. Reggie Sims, fantastic. Great yards, great carry, Reggie Sims. I don't think you could have said much more than that. Man. I mean, hey, what great, else could great you hands, say? Great blocking. Big first down. Del Valley now on the Trojan 26. Two minutes left to go in the first half. The handoff goes to Dunlop on the delay. He's got a blocker in front, rumbles ahead to the 25, and that'll be good for about a yard, keeping the clock running with 1.53 to go in a tied ball game here, seven apiece. Del Valley breaks huddle, three to the top. Single uh, off, running back offset to the right of Elijah Washington, who's going to use him as a blocker as he calls his own number, spins out of a tackle, and is going to be good for about a four-yard carry. Elijah Washington calling his own number is going to bring up third and about four and a half with 1.15 left to go here in the first half and setting up on the Trojan 21-yard line. 
One yard to get to the red zone, but they need five to get to another set of downs, and that'll put them at the Trojan 16. Just under a minute to go now. Three wide, two to the near side. Caleb uh, Burton is your single wide receiver. Dunlop offset to the right of Washington. The snap, the hold, the carry goes to Dunlop, rumbles forward, should be close to a first down. He thinks he's going to be about a half a yard shy. It's also going to keep the clock moving. It is going to be fourth and short for the Dell Valley Cardinals. They're going to set the ball at the 17-yard line on the Trojan side of the field. 25 seconds to go. Dell Valley's going for it. Three wide, two to the near side. Dunlop to single back. Washington gets the, carry, the snap, hands it off to Dunlop, drives the legs forward. Did he get enough for the first? Trojans are and cheering like he didn't. Nope, it doesn't look like he did. First down, Anderson Trojans says the head zebra. So with 11 seconds left to go in the first half, turnover on downs by the Dale Valley Cardinals. Timeout and the field goal try there, or do you think you like the call? Well, you know what? I like the call. Yeah? I do. I think he had confidence in, in Dunlop and everybody else to be able to make that happen. I think the Trojans were just ready for it. And we have a flag coming in before the play can get started. Dead ball, false start, going to go against the Trojans. So before they can even get the ball snapped, we have a false start. And that's going to back them up. So first and 15. So they were on their own 17-yard line. Now they're back to their own 12. Anderson Trojan defense stepping up big. Now they're hoping their offense can come away with something. Nope. Championship formation, as we like to call it, at the end of the ball game. But right now, it's just good, safe football. Trojans take a knee. First half will come to an end. Tied ball game here. Dell Valley and the Trojans, seven apiece from Nelson Field. And you're listening to it proudly right here on the KMAC Sports Network and being presented by Super Smiles Dentistry, Beyond the Move Realty, and Austin Community College. The Anderson Trojan Marching Band will be coming out onto the field, so we're going to take a real quick commercial break. Give some love to the sponsors because they deserve it. Uh, I apologize. This will be the Dell Valley Marching Band. They always do the visiting team first. I apologize. The Dell Valley Marching Band. So after this quick commercial break, we will bring it back to the sounds of the game and let you Dell Valley fans listen to the Dell Valley Cardinal Marching Band, and Robert and I will come back after that for our first half breakdown and the keys to victory for the Dell Valley Cardinals in the second half. So don't go anywhere. This is the Hendricks Motor Company broadcast of Dell Valley Cardinal football right here on the KMAX Sports Network. BMW of South Austin and Audi South Austin are proud title sponsors of Cardinal Athletics. Located near IH35 and Stastny Lane, Hendrick Automotive offers two premier facilities featuring over 500 new vehicles, along with our award-winning manufacturer certified service centers. Being focused on people by serving our teammates, our customers, and our community is what sets this dealership apart. People are our most important asset. Come ex KMAX Sports is on Twitter. Get up-to-date scores and more on your computer and on the go with your smartphone. It's fast and easy. Just follow us at KMAX Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, Dell Valley Marching Band. Now, 
please enjoy as we help the former Jackson team to 8 0 Mountain High.
BMW of South Austin and Audi South Austin are proud title sponsors of Cardinal Athletics. Located near IH35 and Stastny Lane, Hendrick Automotive offers two premier facilities featuring over 500 new vehicles, along with our award-winning manufacturer certified service centers. Being focused on people by serving our teammates, our customers, and our community is what sets this dealership apart. People are our most important asset. Come Super Smiles Dental Center is a proud sponsor of Cardinal Athletics. We're a family-owned dental office dedicated to providing affordable, quality dental care. We accept Medicaid, CHIP, and most PPO insurance plans. We also offer 0% down and 0% financing on all dental services. We have a convenient office serving Del Valley families located at the corner of Ross Road and Highway 71. Call 512-247-6000 or go to supersmilestexas.com to make it... Some realtors just want to sell you a house, but at Beyond the Move Realty, they want to build a relationship for life. Because let's face it, your needs can and will change. When that happens, Beyond the Move will be there as a trusted resource to help you buy or sell your next home. Learn more online at btmrealty.com or stop by and see them at 411 Humphreys Drive in Butte. Thinking about college but you don't know where to start? Austin Community College is here to help. Call or visit ACC's College Destination Center now to talk one-on-one -on -one with enrollment advisors about your goals and everything you need to get your college plans on track. It's never too early to start. Whether you want to earn a degree, train for a career, or get ahead with transfer classes, ACC offers personalized assistance with applications, financial aid, and more. Visit us at austincc.edu slash start now or call 512-223-7747 to learn more more. ACC. Start here, get there. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. And while all of us at the KMAC Sports Network are huge football fans, we broadcast more than just football, you know. In fact, KMAC Sports proudly broadcasts volleyball, girls and boys basketball, softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and more. For more information on how you can help KMAC Sports broadcast any of those sports, just reach out to chuck at kmacsports.com or merle at kmacsports.com or contact that sports booster club directly. KMAC Sports will gladly work with you and the booster clubs to get that team's broadcasts on the air. And if you're a fan of the other team, well, we can broadcast your team's games too. We realize that, yes, even in Texas, there's more to life than just football. KMAX Sports, bringing your teams to you for 14 years. Sound off. Tell us what you think right here on Twitter, at KMAX Sports. Socialize with us. You don't have what they call the social ski. On Twitter, at KMAX Sports. Or catch us on Facebook. Search KMAX Sports. Just another way KMAX Sports is bringing your team to you. This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Looking left. Throws into the end. Snap again. He hits the 
hits the turf, and Dan Hoss gives it up, came away with the corner on the other side. 10, 5, touchdown. Let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at GameMaxSports.com or Chuck at GameMaxSports.com to find out how. Side, he's got blockers in front of him. Touchdown. Touchdown. Five. Touchdown. Yes, sir. It's what we do, and nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. Welcome back to the Hendricks Motor Company broadcast of Dell Valley Cardinal Football brought to you proudly right here on the KMAX Sports Network and presented by Super Smiles Dentistry, uh, Beyond the Move Realty, and Austin Community College. I'm your play-by-play -play com commentator, Daniel Chancellor, alongside my producer and color commentator, Robert Rodriguez. And, of course, we want to thank none other than Rosie Vega back at uh, KMAX Studios for uh, making sure that this broadcast stays in the Wi-Fi waves as clearly and as best as possible. We really appreciate your help, Rosie. Robert, first half has probably been a tale of uh, kind of an offensive battle back and forth, regardless of what the score may seem like with only seven apiece. But these two defenses have really tried to uh, – we, Robert, I mean, uh, Coach and I talked in the interview of how we thought this offense, our offense, would be a little bit more dominant to their defense, who was, uh, you know, to – and so far it's been just kind of a back and forth tug of war. Nobody uh, really – a lot of bending but no breaking. I like that. A lot of bending, no breaking. Yeah, there you go. But, yeah, it definitely has been a battle of both offense and defense. We only got seven points on the board, Del Valley and Anderson there. And, you know, the defenses have both been pretty good so far. Yeah. And Del Valley has been able to adjust to this different formation, been performing well. And uh, I think both teams are unexpectedly – you know, uh, doing well against each other. And I, I, I think when it comes down to what's going on is the defense are just, um, it's a little more, they're surprised on how well each other's offense is doing. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, it, we're both getting first downs. You know, Del Valley's, like I said, performing the shotgun well. Now, something that seems to be working for them that, they ought to try and do a little more is that screen pass. The screen pass seemed to work well with them, and both Dunlop and uh, Washington doing a fantastic job moving the chains, moving the ball down the field, along with great defense. You got Anthony Key and Chris Reed doing fantastic on tackling, along with the line holding the run game against Anderson. I have to, uh, I have to, I have to agree with you on the screen pass. That, that breakdown in there is pretty, uh, I, I would say, very accurate. We did three screen passes in that last, what, two minutes of uh, possession. Those three screen passes resulted in very big yardage for us. Usually, like I said, when the game was start or going on, a screen pass, unless you've got really outstanding blocking, which we did, but usually a screen pass is good for maybe five, six yards. You know, it's, it's a good way to eat up a couple of yards if you need it, you right. know. But those screen passes and Reggie Sims on those catches on the screen passes, his uh, ability to cut through and uh, avoid tackles, that that was key on top of all the blocking too. But, yeah, the screen passes have been huge the last in the second half. And, again, right before the half, Reggie Sims with a fantastic run and with whole whole team of Del Valley performing well on both sides of the ball, actually. Lions doing a good job. Defense, like I said, able to hold the run. Uh, get a little bit of trouble on the outside, but eventually tackling well. Again, like I said, Anthony Key with some great tackles on the run game, able to even stop up the middle both, but doing good. And again, adjusting well. Let's see what adjustments they make in this next half. I think we ought to be all right. Anderson Trojan Marching Band on the field right now. The Dale Valley Cardinal Marching Band doing a good job. Uh, Robert, I think uh, for me, the biggest question mark I have of the first half comes in the last 11 seconds of this ball uh, of that first half. We get down to uh, in close to the red zone here. Uh, I think we're on the 21, 22 yard line. We went for it on fourth and one. 
when we were well within range of our kicker, uh, Kevin Vasquez, uh, coach and his coaching staff decided and elected to go for it on fourth and one instead of kicking that field goal to make it to make it a 10-7 or potentially make it a 10-7 ball game. You like the call. I'm still on the fence about that one. I think when you're in district ball, you know, as a, as a commentator up here in the booth, I look at it as we need points. We need to take, make some separation here. We need to we need to go into the locker room with a little motivation and to come out with it. Also, I think that I think that opportunity to kick that field goal, I think, should have been. I might have been a, a looked at a little closer. I, I I think I agree with you. The uh, points being on the board will give a little bit of motivation in there. But I think in my uh, I, I guess my theory would have been okay. We got the. We need seven points going into the game. Coming back out with the ball. We receive the ball second half. If we can score another seven points, that puts us two touchdowns on top. So, I see unlike saying. just a field goal and maybe not, if for some reason, not being able to get the touchdown, we're looking for the bigger lead here. That's what Coach, I think, might have been looking for was the bigger lead going into the second half. But the points are important. Like you said, it would have been great to have some more uh, – even if it was that field goal, but I think, like I said, he was looking for the bigger, well, one the of bigger, the, better deal there. Right, right. Well, one of the concerns we had when we started this broadcast was, were we going to get through this broadcast? Were we going to be able to get through this football game because of the impending weather that's coming off the uh, at, at the Gulf and obviously the hurricane that's going to hit the uh, right. East Coast for us? Uh, so far, the football gods have been shining down on us, and everything that's been coming this way has been broken up before it got here. So while we have been watching stuff roll in from the east, now things are dark. Their sun is set. It's the only thing lights we have out here are the stadium lights. We can't tell what's happening off there in the east anymore. But it looks like we're going to cut it uh, out of here, or we're going to get it out of here, and we're going to get the football, com- football game completely in. So knock on wood, uh, unless something uh, should happen weather-wise. This one's going to get played in its entirely on a Thursday night under the lights. Um, man, Robert, let, let's talk about the keys to victory here in the second half for the Dale Valley Cardinals. It's been an interesting first half, a lot of back-and-forth action. We've shown that we can move the ball on offense. We've shown that we're having a little trouble stopping our own type of offense, the wing T offense that, that the uh, Trojans are using tonight. We're having a little bit of trouble stopping the offense. That This defense should be very, you know, everybody – is aware of what kind of offense we play, including our own defense. So what do you think the, the contributing factor here is for this defense and why are they struggling against an offense they should be very familiar with? Even though, we've, like, like you said, they, they practiced the wing T offense, going up against them is a different story. Again, this is some, uh, some defensive players that are starting for the first time. They've played before with Del Valley Cardinals, but starting nonetheless is uh, – this is their first season, and not saying any excuses, but this is third game in, small adjustment we need to still get used to, and uh, we got to look at the factor that defense is doing well. Um, small adjustments can make a big difference, and that's what I think Del Valley is looking to do. It's just some small adjustments they need to make. Um, be, again, being more careful on the outside, stopping the run on the outside, don't, not giving too much cushion, that seems to be something that uh, we have a bad habit of and I think uh, once we find what those uh, shortfalls are on the defense stopping the run game and any passes will be no problem again it shouldn't be no problem again finding those small adjustments against that wing T offense. Coy Fulmer is the guy that's eating us up on the outside right now that 5'10", 185, 190 pound frame 4'4 speed and he's shown it tonight and actually Expect you know running in between the tackles is Tondrick Givens, that big fullback. Uh, that dude is huge, and he, our defense has actually found a way to stop Givens, but somehow have opened the windows up more for Fulmer and his running ability on the outside, like you were mentioning. I would like to see our offense and uh, our guys take it more up the tackles. We've been doing a lot on the outside, doing a lot of sweeps and and uh, things like that. Uh, a lot of fly sweeps. I would like to see what um, Dunlop can do up the middle. Let's see if he can carry that load like that, like uh, like Givens has been doing for the Trojans. I know that we know Dunlop is more than capable of doing that. Strong running back has done a fantastic job here so far with a touchdown for the game. And he's got this ability to, once he grabs the ball, to move out and cut right into the line. Look for that hole in order to break past it and uh, he, that's, his, that's his thing there. 
up the middle might be something, like you said, that would be unexpected. Maybe that would be a good thing for him to punch it right in there. I think offensively, we don't need to change things much on our offensive side of things. Watch the holding penalties because that seems to be hurting us like it has the last couple of weeks. If we can seriously bring those holding penalties, I think what you say unofficially, we were sitting at five penalties in the first half. Just about, yeah. yeah give or take. I mean, unofficially from our, our scoreboard, we're looking at five penalties. To the Trojans, I don't know if you've been keeping track of the Trojans' penalties or not, but I, I, think, I think they're somewhere around the same, but not – their penalties don't seem to... So maybe one less. Yeah, I think one maybe less. So one less. It, it, it's, it, it'll be a tell of two halves, I think. I think we're going to see what adjustments you talked about here in the first half, uh, from the first half at halftime. And I think the first half of this third quarter is going to open up a door for one of these teams. We're looking for it to be our Cardinals. And when that door gets opened, I think you're going to see it kicked in with uh, SWAT-style action. And when that happens, the scoreboard's going to go crazy. We had talked about last week, you know, uh, in uh, what was it, the fourth quarter. I said, I feel an interception coming on. Yep, yep. I think these kinds of things will definitely help the Cardinals. And you got Cardinals, two of them, by the way. Two of them, that's <laughs> right. Help the Cardinals boost their confidence. They already have plenty of it, but definitely get them in the game, get them hyped up. Some kind of play like this, fumble be it, will definitely boost both sides of the ball. And we've seen it before. It just hypes them up and makes a difference in the game. Well, we are about three minutes away before the end of halftime. We need to give some love to the sponsors one more time. Two interceptions. Before, uh, two interceptions. <laughs> two, two, two bottles of water waiting for you in the truck. <laughs> we need to give some love to the sponsors one more time before we get uh, halftime over with. So let us uh, cut away to one more quick commercial break. When we come back, the teams are blowing up the inflatables and getting ready to take the field for the second half. The Dell Valley Cardinals will be kicking off to start the second half and defending the south end zone. So don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Hendrix Motor Company broadcast of Dell Valley Cardinal Football brought to you proudly on the KMAX Sports Network. BMW of South Austin and Audi South Austin are proud title sponsors of Cardinal Athletics. Located near IH35 and Stastny Lane, Hendrick Automotive offers two premier facilities featuring over 500 new vehicles, along with our award-winning manufacturer certified service centers. Being focused on people by serving our teammates, our customers, and our community is what sets this dealership apart. People are our most important asset. Come ex- Super Smiles Dental Center is a proud sponsor of Cardinal Athletics. We're a family-owned dental office dedicated to providing affordable, quality dental care. We accept Medicaid, CHIP, and most PPO insurance plans. We also offer 0% down and 0% financing on all dental services. We have a convenient office serving Del Valley families located at the corner of Ross Road and Highway 71. Call 512-247-6000 or go to supersmilestexas.com to make it... Some realtors just want to sell you a house, but at Beyond the Move Realty, they want to build a relationship for life. Because let's face it, your needs can and will change. When that happens, Beyond the Move will be there as a trusted resource to help you buy or sell your next home. Learn more online at btmrealty.com or stop by and see them at 411 Humphreys Drive in beautiful. Thinking about college but you don't know where to start? Austin Community College is here to help. Call or visit ACC's College Destination Center now to talk one-on-one -on -one with enrollment advisors about your goals and everything you need to get your college plans on track. It's never too early to start. Whether you want to earn a degree, train for a career, or get ahead with transfer classes, ACC offers personalized assistance with applications, financial aid, and more. Visit us at austincc.edu slash start now or call 512-223-7747 to learn more. ACC, start here, get there. Welcome back to the Hendricks Motor Company broadcast of Dell Valley Cardinal Football brought to you proudly right here on the KMAX Sports, broad, uh, KMAX Sports Network. Excuse me, I am your play-by-play -play commentator, Daniel Chancellor, alongside 
color commentator and uh, producer Robert Rodriguez. And, of course, we want to thank our QA back at KMAC Studios, Rosie Bega, for filling in tonight and doing a fantastic job. Thank you, Rosie. The Dell Valley Cardinals are teeing it up on the uh, North 40 as they will be defending the north end zone. I said south before the commercial break, so I apologize. But they will be going north to south, kicking off to the Trojans. Again, a tied ball game here, seven apiece. Twelve minutes are on the clock. Dell Valley defense will be looking to uh, right the ship, so to speak, and correct the miscues from the first half. They helped seal the victory last week. Let's see if they can do it again this week. A high short kick. From Del Valley to the Trojans, recovered at the Trojan 28, brought up to the Trojan 32, and that is where they will start this offensive possession at 11.57 to go here in the third quarter. Del Valley Cardinal defense again, 3-4 defense, very fast. Likes to get great penetration in the backfield. Did a good job of that last week. Struggling a little bit here this week as the Trojan offense found a way to keep those holes from being filled by this defense. If they have switched to a 4-3 and a handoff, Givens again with the muscle handoff gets about three, taking them up to the Trojan 35. That'll bring up second and seven with 11.40 to go here in the third quarter. Now, I don't know if it's an omen or not, Robert, but at halftime, you know, when the teams blow up the inflatable and they do another warm-ups and they run out to just like they do at the beginning of the game. The Trojan yes, inflatable blew up to start the game, but for halftime, didn't uh, didn't blow up. So the Trojans <laughs> just took the field without their inflatable. But Fulmer, with a big run on the far side of the field, gets the Trojans a first down and puts them in Dell Valley territory all the way up to the Dell Valley 47-yard line. Big run there by the Trojans on the legs of Coy Fulmer. Again, Coy Fulmer exploiting the outside there and just doing a fantastic job of uh, making our defense pay for not being able to seal that off. 11-17 to go. Single wide receiver to the near side for the Trojans. Wing T, handoff to Givens up the middle, muscles his way forward for about a five yard gain. We'll make it a four and a half. And that'll bring up second and six with 11 minutes to go here in the third quarter. Again, on the Dell Valley side of the field, set up at the Dell Valley 44. We'll get you some scores again from around the area here in just a little bit. Should have done that for you at halftime as the Trojans break huddle. Wing T set up again. And the handoff to Fulmer. This time he's not going anywhere. Back to the line of scrimmage with actually a one yard loss. Dell Valley defense stepping up. This will make it a third and seven with 10 and a half minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Jalen Gilmore definitely able to read that run with a great tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Third and long, Delft Valley defense looking to stop him here. Quick snap, Fulmer with the carry on the far side. He's gonna get the first down and a little bit more. Gets shoved out of bounds at the Del Valley 35 yard line. He needed to get to the 37. So a first down for the Trojans. And we have a, do have an injured player on the field. It is a, looks like a Del Valley Cardinal. He is off the field of play, but they're still attending to him and letting the training staff take a look at him on the sideline. Not sure who it is. It is uh, all the way on the east side of the field. We cannot see at all who it is. But we can tell you it is a Dell Valley Cardinal. There is 10.02 left on the clock here in the third quarter. Trojans have been moving the ball very well here to start this quarter. Scores from around the area. Again, Elgin traveling to Pflugerville. Pflugerville uh, leading this one 27-17. Uh, Rouse leading their game over uh, Weiss 38-13. McCallum traveling to Glenn and leading that one 2014. Del Valley Cardinal up on his feet. That is really good to see. I believe that was uh, Joshua Castaneda. Was that who you saw, Robert? Or uh, did I see the wrong number? 
Looked like Joshua Castaneda, so I'm not sure. Not sure who that was. Saw 21 come out of the scrum, the, the players down on the turf. So we'll hope either way as that snaps a bad one for the Trojans. Still able to get it off the turf and hand it off to Fulmer. It's going to be good for about a two-yard gain. So that will bring up second and long, 9.50 to go here in the third quarter for the Trojans setting up on the Dell Valley 33-yard line. Quarterback play tonight for the Trojans has been pretty simple. It hasn't uh, required a lot uh, for Scott Del, uh, Del, Bosque, uh, Del Boisk, excuse me, senior quarterback. Hasn't thrown, I think, but maybe one pass all night. As the wing tee is not set up really for the passing game as the handoff to Givens up the middle, keeping the legs churning. And that'll be close to a first down, bringing up third and three from the Dell Valley 28-yard line. Looked like Joshua Hernandez was on that tackle there. Senior defensive back. And the huddle breaks. Big set here for the Trojans. And the handoff to Fulmer up the middle with two blockers. To help him out, he's going to get close to the uh, first down marker. Actually, he is going to be short of the first down of about half a yard. So fourth and short from the Dell Valley 26-yard line. He's going to get to the Dell Valley 25. Trojans are trying to get uh, their fans to quiet down, and the Dell Valley Cardinals are trying to pump theirs up. Break the huddle with a single wide receiver to the near side. And the handoff to Gibbons, he looks for a hole, he dives forward up to just a hair past the 25 yard line in between the 24 and 25. Del Valley says they recovered it. It may be close to a, it may be a turnover on downs. We're gonna have a measurement here. No measurement, the referee sees it, looks at it and calls it a turnover on downs. Big break there for the Del Valley defense. First down for the offense. Nicely done. Again, Joshua, or Josh Hernandez, excuse me, senior defensive back with a stop, helping the Cardinals get that ball back. Now let's move it down the field. Del Valley Cardinal offense setting up on their own 26-yard line. Another 25-6A ball game being played right now. Westlake has traveled to Aikens. And the Eagles are doing their best, but unfortunately unable to do much. 46-0 the score there at halftime. And a handoff to Noah. It says Washington holds on to it. He's caught his number. He's crossed the 40. Now the 15. And he's in the Trojan territory. Up to the 30, the 25. He gets shoved out of bounds at about the 17. Let's see where they mark it. A huge, huge run there by the Dell Valley Cardinals on the legs of Elijah Washington calling his own number on the quarterback keeper. <laughs> wow. We do have an injured player. No, it is one of the refs. The ref on the sideline, on the near side here, on the Trojan sideline, must have got taken out uh, by a blocker or a blocker. We hope that the referee is okay. No matter who's on the field, we don't want to see any injuries. But let's talk about that run by Elijah Washington all the way back on their own 26-yard line. And right now they are posted up at the Trojan 16. Had everybody fooled, including me, was looking for Dunlap, Dunlap to take it up on the far side. And out of nowhere, Washington just tears it up, leaving uh, lots of Trojans in his dust with only two to be able to make the tackle, one doing so in red zone territory. 70 yard run for Elijah Washington with 7.55 here to go in the third quarter. We have a referee that uh, was taken, uh, he was hit unfortunately on the sideline. Walking they're, it off. Yeah, walking it off. They're asking for a backup. I don't know if we have one, but they're talking to some training staff. He's at, they're asking him if he wants to continue. It is the line judge. And it looks like uh, the line judge is going to take a seat for now. I'm not sure where the injury was. Uh, he's not a UIL football player, so we can tell you he is limping off the field. Uh, he is. Uh, hopefully the ref will be okay. They are going to continue 
now with uh, they have five refs still on the field. They put a pulled it back up. So the Dell Valley Cardinals, after a huge 70-yard tear down the field on the legs of Elijah Washington, will start this second play from scrimmage on their first offensive possession of the second half. From the Trojan 16-yard line, they break into the spread with three wide, two to the top, and Dunlop behind his quarterback in the pistol. The handoff to Dunlop, and he takes down a would-be tackler. Rumbles ahead for about three yards, and that'll bring up second and maybe five for the Cardinals. Clock is still running. Del Valley not in a hurry here. And great. Great territory. Seven and a half minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Second and about six from the Trojan 17-yard line. Three wide to the top. Single back offset to the left of Washington. Man in motion from top to bottom. The snap. The handoff to Dunlop who spins out of a tackle and goes down at about the seven. That's going to be very close to a Dell Valley first down. He's going to be about a yard shy. That's going to bring up third and one from the Trojan. What is that? Seven yard line. 6.50 to go here in the third quarter. Dell Valley trying to take their second lead of the ball game. Breaks the huddle with two wide to the top. Pistol formation with Dunlop behind his quarterback. The snap, and Dunlop gets the call. No, it is Washington on the far side. No one saw it. He crosses the goal line untouched, and the Dell Valley Cardinals take their second lead of the game, 13-7. 6.27 left to go here in the third quarter, and we are waiting for the extra point try. Again, so far, these small adjustments have paid off very well. Dunlop and Washington doing a great job with the fake. Had me fake several times so far. Washington with the touchdown, getting ready for the point after. The fourth down goal out of the fourth down stand on their own 26 yard line when the Trojans had it. Point after is good. It's what set this drive up. Able to stop Big Givens from getting that first down by about a half a yard. And the Dell Valley Cardinals lead this one. 14-7 with 6.27 left to go here in the third quarter. Fantastic job by the Dell Valley Cardinals. Great adjustment. And I have to say it again, the, the, the fourth down stand by this defense just give, having a little more heart and a little more want to than the Anderson Trojans on their offensive side is what set up this goal. So now our Dell Valley Cardinals with the ball teed up on the 40-yard line will come out on the legs of Kevin Vasquez to give the Trojans another opportunity to move down the field or this defense another opportunity to take the ball away. We hope you're enjoying this broadcast here on the KMAC Sports Network. You can hear a lot more tomorrow night right here as uh, scheduled a Friday night under the lights ball games. From all over the KMAC Sports broadcast teams will be out scattered all over Central and North Texas as well as some out in East Texas We've had, as we have affiliates all over this great state of ours bringing you some really good high school football. So check it out right here tomorrow night on the KMAC Sports Network. Kickoff by Vasquez, high, short kick. Caught at the 22-yard line where a fair catch was called. Kerry Fulmer again. He was going to try to run that when he thought about it, but decided against it. So the Anderson Trojans starting this offensive drive with 6.27 to go in the third quarter are actually going to get this one spotted at the 25-yard line. And the snap, the handoff to Fulmer on the far side on the fly sweep. Turf Monster able to get him. And that's going to result in a three-yard loss, bringing up second and about 12 for the Trojans with 6.15 left to go here in the third quarter. And again, the small adjustments that needed to be made, hopefully, 
are happening here and we can get the ball back without any hesitation again fantastic fantastic touchdown by Washington spread formation the first time we've seen this tonight from the Trojans two backs and two wide to the near side and a, a rare throw here pressure throws it to the near side off the fingertips Del Valley defender Chris Turner got some air time on that one and deflected it just enough to keep it out of the hands of Coy Fulmer who came out on the in the wide wide receiver position excuse me just a bit early on that jump a little bit later would have had the interception a great job by Turner nonetheless and Del Valley Cardinals themselves keeping up with the Anderson Trojans third and 12 shotgun formation again for the Trojans four wide three at the top a throw to the far side on the screen results in no gain on the play but flags are on the turf we'll see what the call is great great penetration by Eddie Dawson pushing through the line and almost grabbing the quarterback. Holding by the Anderson Trojans on that play. And it was to Eddie Dawson. Should be should be declined and it should bring up fourth down for the Trojans. And it is exactly that. Coach Burton and company decide to decline it. Brings up fourth and 13 with five and a half minutes left to go here in the third quarter. This Dell Valley defense doing a fantastic job with a little help from some penalties. Offense is fixing to get another run at it. They sure are. And again, man, great play. i got to give Dawson some more credit there, pushing through the line and making this happen. Trevor Merrick back to punt this one away. Actually listed as a wide receiver and defensive back. Rugby-style punt, very high. Nice end-over-end -end kick, crosses the 50, hits the Dell Valley 45 and takes a Trojan bounce, short Trojan bounce, all the way up to the Dell Valley 41. So not a bad place to start on the field for the Cardinals with 5.01 left in the third quarter and a seven-point lead. Dell Valley 14, Anderson 7. Another set of downs to play with here, another offensive possession. Dell Valley looks like, like you said earlier, Robert, looks to be like they've found that groove that we were talking about in the first half. They finally found it. Maybe that, that score and that big 70-yard run by Elijah Washington was that kick through the door I talked about at halftime also. Whatever adjustments the Lions are making now, getting back there are doing great. Three wide to the bottom here or near side. Movement from top to bottom brings trips to the near side and a fumble on the handoff as Washington scoops up his own fumble. He's got blockers in front of him and unbelievably is able to get a little bit past the first uh, the line of scrimmage. That fumble happened seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. He actually got a yard on the carry. Even though we just had the fumble, it just shows the great athletic capability and ability that Washington has. Good thing he's leading this team. Great recovery by Washington. Three wide, two to the near side. Dunlop behind his quarterback in the pistol, and the handoff goes to Dope. Washington again holds on to it, but this time the Anderson Trojans have read it. Tackled all the way back at the 40. That is going to result in about a three-yard loss. A little chippiness there on the near sideline as Washington felt like he was hit a little late there by a Trojan coming in to clean up the play. That Anderson band is, kill is, is really killing it over here. Four wide, two to each side for Del Valley. Single back to the left of Washington. Looking to throw. And does on the far side. Caught by Burton, who's going to get past the 50 and then some and get shoved out of bounds at the, what is that, the Trojan 46? They're going to mark it at the 47. That is going to be a really nice 14-yard pass reception for Burton. Burton, great hands, great speed. That is Everything what I was about to need. say, that speed. Man, that speed, I'm telling you, even the defender, as he tried to make the tackle, popped him back just a little bit. Main, making sure he knows who he's going up against. Great job, Burton. One of the one of the freshmen, freshmen on this 
varsity football team, and he is showing how and why he has earned that spot. Three wide to the top, single back, man in motion from near to far side. The snap, and Washington holding on to it. Whistle blows this one dead as we're going to have a penalty. This is the false start area. <clears throat> dead ball, false start, going to go against the Del Valley Cardinals. So first and 10 will now be first and 15, and now they'll be at their own 48-yard line, needing to get to the Trojan 37 for first down. Three minutes, 26 seconds left on the clock in the third quarter. Del Valley on top, 14 to seven. Couple more scores from around the area. Reagan traveling to Eastview. It's halftime. Eastview putting a whooping on those Reagan Raiders, 63-14 in Salado playing Travis. That one at halftime, 28-0, the handoff. No, with a fake handoff on the screen pass near side. We got flags coming in late, but again, John Bracken, Big John, senior tight end, getting his number called, getting about three yards on the screen pass, and it is going to go against Del Valley again, offensive pass interference. Too bad. You hate to see when a penalty is called with such a great catch like that. Again, I think... We're going to stick with Big John. I like that. Yeah, Big John Bracken. Uh, he's definitely a big, full, uh, good size tight end out there. Uh, senior tight end. We've big also John seen uh, Seth Levering on the field. He hasn't caught anything tonight, but Seth Levering the last couple of weeks has gotten his number called a couple of times and made very good use of it every time. So third and 17 is now resulting in a first, uh, I'm sorry, 317 on the clock. We're after penalties sitting at a first and 30 for our Cardinals. And they're all the way back at their own 32 yard line. Three wide to the top. Dunlop to the right of Washington looking to throw and does on the screen here to the middle of the field. Cuts it up and gets tripped up, taken down at the 34. Resulting in about a yard on the pass. Good catch there by Reggie Sims again. Reggie Sims obviously becoming our slot guy. Uh, and we do have an injured Trojan on the field. Can't see a number, but either way, we hope he'll be okay. Why don't we take a, a real quick break while the training staff for the Trojans take a look at this downed player. 2.50 to go here in the third quarter. Dell Valley on top, 14-7 over the Anderson Trojans, and you're listening to it proudly on the KMAX Sports Network. Hey, Booster parents. Get involved with a new all-in-one tool that helps you raise funds, sign up volunteers, collect items, and promote your event or cause. It's never been so easy to get so much done. Forget the multiple volunteer, fundraising, and sign-up lists. It's now all-in-one. Get involved today at GetInvolvedCo.com. That's GetInvolvedCo.com. Light Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vipe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vipe, B-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vipe magazine today. Get in the game with Vipe Media. BMW of South Austin and Audi South Austin are proud title sponsors of Cardinal Athletics. Located near IH35 and Stasney Lane, Hendrick Automotive offers two premier facilities featuring over 500 new vehicles, along with our award-winning manufacturer certified service centers. Being focused on people by serving our teammates, our customers, and our community is what sets this dealership apart. People are our most important asset. Come ex Andre Jackson is off the turf for the Anderson Trojans, and we are very happy to see that as we come back hot here to Nelson Field where the Dell Valley Cardinals lead the Anderson Trojans 14-7 right here on the KMAC Sports Network. I'm Daniel Chancellor alongside Robert Rodriguez and Rosie Vega at KMAC Studios, making sure that we stay live on the Wi-Fi waves. Spread offense for the Cardinals, three wide to the near side. Flag comes in right at the snap and a pass over the center of the field. Bob will be caught at the 49-yard line. It won't be good enough for a first down, but it'll be close to the original line of scrimmage. It's only about four yards away from the line of scrimmage, but we're going to have a holding call go against the Dell Valley Cardinals, which will negate the fantastic catch by Reggie Sims. Bobbled it three or four times with a defender on his back and still was able to haul it in, but no good. Holding against the Dell Valley Cardinals will make this. Uh, we were at first and 30. We're going to be looking at 
Second and 40, I believe. First and 40. You got to hand it to Reggie Sims, doing a fantastic job these past couple of plays. But too bad with the penalty calls. Uh, man, and they're getting both great plays. Reggie Sims doing a good job with a bobbled catch. And again, had to come back because of a penalty, holding penalty. All right, so we have a dead ball, dead, dead ball, false start go against the Del Valley Cardinals. They decline that one. Then we have a holding penalty going against the Del Valley Cardinals. They will accept that one. So now we will be looking at second and 40. The Del Valley Cardinals lining up on their own 24-yard line. They need to get to the Trojan 37 for a first down. They break the huddle. Three wide, two to the near side. Single back offset to the right of Washington. The snap, looking to throw. He does over the center, caught on the near side by Burton, up to the 40-yard line and gets taken down. That will bring up third and long, but it will bring up uh, a lot less than it was with about a 20-yard catch there for Burton. Burton does such a great job in getting open. Breaks away, cuts, whatever you have it. Good job getting open, and of course, great hands by the freshman. Third and about 22 for the Dell Valley. Make that 29 for the Dell Valley Cardinals. 128 to go here in the third quarter. They break the huddle in the spread with two on either side and a single back. The snap, trying to get it off before the clock strikes zero. Del Valley able to call a timeout before the delay penalty call is uh, thrown against the Cardinals. That is going to be the first charge timeout for our Del Valley Cardinals, leaving two left here in the second half. 121 left to go in the third quarters. Penalty struggles, brother. Penalty, penalty, penalties. What is that, the fourth so far? It, just this here in quarter. the third quarter. If we had five unofficially in the first half, these four right here in the third quarter needed 40 yards for a first down right now we need 24 to get to uh, a first down and it's a third and a long way to go play action you're looking to throw the ball deep on a delay a delay quarterback keeper quarterback option what do you think is going to happen here i think the these situations call for things like we saw um the reverse uh flea flicker things like that okay if Right now, you've got 24 yards to go. You've got great, great wide receivers like Burton out there, runners like Dunlop so far doing a great job on uh, faking with the run play. Washington able to do some tremendous things on the run. But, uh, again, this is where the trick plays come in to play and can definitely uh, take advantage of it right now with 24 yards to go in order to get a first down. Well, the timeout is over. The Dell Valley Cardinals have talked about it, and they are going to do a four wide. Two to either side. A little confusion by the wide receivers. Coaching staff trying to get everybody in the right place. 15 seconds left on the play clock is Jacob Lopez is still trying to figure out where he's supposed to be on the field. Trips to the top now. The snap, the fake handoff. And throws it far down the field. Intended for levering. Batted away by Jackson Green, senior defensive back and also wide receiver for the Trojans. And that will bring up fourth and 24 with 1.16 left to go here in the third quarter in the punting team for the Dell Valley Cardinals. And again, these quarters are flying by. Would have been a great pass. No flag on the play. Good arm, of course, by Washington. Just not able to pull it off. Aaron Hernandez, the punter for the Del Valley Cardinals, back at the Del Valley 27-yard line to send this one down the field. There's the snap. He gets it off in time. No, it's blocked by the Trojans. Hernandez trying to get on top of it and does all the way down at the Del Valley 14-yard line. So that is where the Anderson Trojans will take over. Man, what a uh, crazy change of uh, direction here for the, the Del Valley Cardinals. 
blocked punt. And now the Trojans deep in Dell Valley territory here on the Dell Valley. Uh, they're going to mark it at the 14 with 110 left to go here in the third quarter, Robert. Dell Valley needs to maintain good defense. Even though something like this happens, you can always change the game back. Just needs to stay focused and make things happen on defense. Fulmer in motion, and he's the one with the with the uh, carry on the outside. Missed tackle, unfortunately, by Del Valley in the backfield. Andres Gomez, who doesn't do that too often, had Fulmer at the ankles about three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Unfortunately, he just wasn't able to hold on to him. He's going to get about two yards on the carry, bringing up second and eight. Under 40 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Anderson breaks the huddle. One single wide receiver, and the handoff goes quickly up the middle. No good. No gain on the carry. And that will bring up third and eight now for the Trojans. 32 seconds and counting. Hard run there. Looks like that was the quarterback who held on to that one, Scott Del Bosque. Eddie Dawson again there with the stop. So far doing a fantastic job. Lineman who is a senior. They're happy to just let the clock strike zero. So we head to the fourth quarter. It'll be third and ten for the Anderson Trojans. But they'll be setting up on the Dell Valley 13 when we get ready to come back right after this quick break and give some love to the sponsors. Don't go anywhere, folks. You're listening to a good one right here on the KMAX Sports Network. This is the KMAX Sports Network, and this is what we do. Looking left, throws into the end. It's up again. He hits the turf, and Del Bosque gives it up. Cameron Whitney scores on the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Let us broadcast to your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. Side, he's got blockers in front of him. Touchdown. Touchdown. Five. Touchdown. Yes, sir. It's what we do, and nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. Sound off. Tell us what you think right here on Twitter at KMAX Sports. Follow all the game day action right on our Twitter feed at KMAX Sports. Welcome back to Nelson Field. 12 minutes are on the clock, and the Trojans are trying to convert a third and 10. It's a handoff to Fulmer on the near side. He goes nowhere, and that'll bring up fourth and eight on a two yard carry with 11.52 here to go in the ball game. Dell Valley cradling on to a seven point lead here against the Trojans. 14 7 to score. Dell Valley seems to be doing very well so far. The past couple of games, one of the things that we've seen is Dell Valley doing a fantastic job able to stop the run while they're in the red zone. But again, this defense is something else and always improving so far every game that we've seen them. Trojan offense taking their time, really talking about what they want to do on this play. And we're actually going to have a timeout called by the Trojans. They let the uh, play clock get down to almost nothing, and now they want to talk about it. We'll keep it here with 11.15 left to go. Kind of an interesting tactic, Robert. You kind of see these tactics at the end of a ball game when you're trying to either take the lead late and hold on to a score or, you know, trying to play a little mind games. But this early in the fourth quarter, I'm trying to figure out what, uh, what head, new head coach uh, Daniel Hunter is thinking right now. Not sure, but, man. So far, been an exciting game. Like I said, 11-15 left on the clock. I'm liking the game so far. So far, talk to Coach in the interview about how, you know, jokingly said, you know, seems like you guys are keeping the, the Dell Valley fans on the edge of their seat and keeping us in the roost, you, you know, lying. excited. He goes, you know, I, yeah, if you heard it, I wouldn't mind. A, I told him I wouldn't mind a blowout win here, Coach. He goes, no, I hear you, no <laughs> doubt. He goes, and we're trying to we're trying to get a couple of those for you this year, but right now it's, it looks like it's another close one. 11:15, the timeout is over, and the Anderson Trojans have sent out their field goal unit, so they are going to try to make this 
a four-point ball game. Del Valley getting set up to block this one. The hold is up. The kick is up, and it sails through. So the Anderson Trojans with a little bit of help make it a 14-10 ball game here at Nelson Field. Del Valley still has a four-point lead here, and they'll be getting this kickoff with a four-point lead. And a lot of time left here in the third quarter, or fourth quarter, excuse me, Robert. Are we going to see Del Valley keeping the playbook open, or are you going to see a few more running plays? Like, Are we going to start? Because we've been in the spread the entire night. We haven't gone to the wing tee not once tonight. And it would be interesting to see if this is where Rocky switches back to southpaw and tries to confuse uh, you know, Apollo Creed and Rocky II, or does he just keep sticking to his right-handed, his traditional style fighting? Tough to say right now, actually. A little changeup could make a difference in the game right now. Again, so far, one of the biggest things right now has been penalties. Right now, the best thing to do is keep clean football and make sure that every play we do run has no penalties. You, yeah, you know what? You hit the nail on the head right there, brother. You, no penalties. That has got to be the focus of this fourth quarter. Got to watch the holding. The holding calls have been killing us, and they did it badly in the third quarter. So discipline, discipline, discipline for this Del Valley uh, football team as the kicker for the Trojans. Send it down the field. It stays on the turf, bounces all the way up to the 23 where it's recovered. Hit at the Del Valley 27, spins out of it and tries to come back to the near side of the field. No good though. Great little return there by Jacob Lopez, junior line, uh, wide receiver. Scooped it up off the turf at the 22 and they're gonna mark it at about the 26. So nice little try there. Yep, great hustle. Spun out, try to get a little bit more yards back up the field. Jacob Lopez again, very nicely done with the return. 10 minutes, 59 seconds left to go in this ball game. Del Valley with a four-point lead, 14-10 the score over the Trojans and starting this drive from their own 26. And there it is, brother, the wing T offense. And the snap, the end, and it goes right up the middle quickly. We have flags come in late. I believe we're going to have a false start going against Del Valley as there was a little bit of movement on the line. Actually, no, they're going to call encroachment against the Trojans. I'd seen it on the far line, Judge, as I saw him do the little padded the hips twice and pointed to the Trojan side of the field. And there it is, encroaching offsides against the Trojans. That'll be a free five yards, and we'll take it all day. 10.51 to go here in the ball game, and first and 10 becomes first and five from the Dell Valley 31-yard line. Now, again, things like this is good for us. We need to maintain this offense without penalties let throw them off, draw the offsides, whatever it is, encroachment, and take these penalties back, get our yards back. Under center, wing T, Michael Flores is your wide receiver to the top far side, and Dunlop gets the call to the near side, breaking outside by the numbers, carrying a defender on his back, and goes down hard on the turf after about a two-yard carry, but that'll bring up second and four with 10-19 left to go here in the ball game. Dunlap, Dunlap, very strong runner. Uh, even though he's as strong as he is, he needs some lead blocking. With that, he can do even more and definitely gain momentum and more yards. Ten minutes on the clock exactly. Second and three for the Cardinals. They're set up on their own 34-yard line. Four-point lead. Back to the spread, three wide to the top. Dunlop behind his quarterback. The snap. And Washington calls his own number, takes it to the far side, bounces out to the numbers, and spins out of a would-be tackle, crosses a first down marker, and gets about a yard more. Nice little hustle there by Elijah Washington from the quarterback position. Again, Washington has this awesome jump back, this cut, and always gains about an extra yard or two. Just when you think he might get tackled, Jumps back, jumps forward, great speed. You can't catch him. I talked to Coach in the pregame interview about the instinct of Elijah Washington when those miscues happen and he's able to see the field in front of him and break it down and make positives happen after it. It's Some just people just naturally gifted that way. 
Back to the wing tee, single wide receiver. The handoff goes to Dunlop, but the Trojan defense sees it, and Dunlop hustles his way out of at least four tackles, trying to make something happen, but man, oh man, showing the strength there. We got a flag coming in late over there by the tackle by Dunlop, and then of course we had a little tussle at the center of the field between a Trojan and a, and a, and a Cardinal, but the flag comes on the far side at the 20, on the closer to the Dell Valley sideline. Again, good, clean offense, no penalties. Ooh, we're going to have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike, go against the Trojans. So not sure what happened on that far side. I did see what happened in the middle of the field, but that's a big penalty after a big loss on that uh, play. And they gave Del Valley an automatic first down on top of that. So Del Valley comes all the way up to their own 43-yard line. That tackle, excuse me, that tackle happened all the way back here at their own 20. And so that was a pretty big loss. The Trojans getting a little feisty down there on the field, resulting in a penalty that resulted in an automatic first down. And Del Valley, with 8.48 and counting on the clock, comes back out in the spread. Tight end in the formation. Three wide to the near side, Dunlop to the left. Big John Bracken is the tight end on the field. We are going to have a timeout. I believe we're having a timeout called by the Dell Valley Cardinals. So, yeah, that's what it is. Second charge timeout for the Dell Valley Cardinals. 8.34 left to go here in the ball game. Brother, this is, uh, this is turning into quite the game. It looks like the Trojans have lost a little bit of that defense, or not uh, their discipline on defense. A couple of bad penalties have kept the, uh, the, our Cardinals in this ball game here in the fourth quarter. I think uh, d definitely where... Del Valley's doing a good job right now. Like we talked about, penalties have been a big factor in the series before. And them playing that clean, no penalty offense has started kind of frustrating the Trojan defense a little bit, drawing them off, getting another penalty, you know, pushing forward. Dunlop doing, of course, great runs, pushing them back. You know, it it's, it's, can get a little heated down there. So here it is, first and 10 from their own 43-yard line. The Dell Valley Cardinals come out in the spread with 834. Two wide receivers in their side, single to the top. And again, Washington call his own number on the quarterback option. Jukes to the inside and makes four. Trojan defenders missing before he crosses the 50 and down at the Trojan 48-yard line. One yard shy of a Dell Valley first down. Again, Washington with that great jump cut, making defenders miss the tackles and getting lots of extra yards there great run i guess i thought dunlop had the ball i well <laughs> not only did i not i noticed that, that washington held on to it but i thought the trojans had him back there and he just said oh not today that jump cut they're gonna have to do something about it if they want to stop him here it is again, same formation, two to the near side, and it's a delay handoff, but this time Dunlop gets his number called, spins out of an ankle tackle, and up to the 40-yard line before he gets taken down. That's going to be good for another Dell Valley first down. Dunlop with his dancing shoes on. No kidding, nice right? spin, maintains momentum, gets extra yards, keeps moving down the field. First down, Dell Valley. Dell Valley first and 10 from the Trojan 40. Seven and a half minutes left to go in this ball game. Dell Valley huddling up every time, not in a big hurry. They've got a four point lead, 14-10 the score. Again, trying to clock manage their way out of this ball game, potentially get some more points on the board before taking it down to zero. Three wide to the near side. The delay handoff goes to Dunlop again this time to the near side. Stiff arms is would-be tackler, but goes out of bounds at about the 40. So no gain on the play. And it also stops the clock. Marion Barbarian move there, there with the was, stiff right? arm. Nicely done. Dunlop didn't get too mean, just a bit, but still a very, very strong runner for Dell Valley. They're actually going to give him a one-yard loss on that carry. Second and 11 with 7.01 to go here in the ball game. Del Valley comes out in the spread. They put trips to the top. 
Dunlop offset to the right of Washington. The snap. Washington puts Dunlop a little further out to help lead block. And the Trojans with penetration read it. Tackle in the backfield. Some of the coaching staff feels like there should have been a flag for a late hit, but it doesn't happen. Now second and 11 will become third and about 16 with 6.42 left to go here in the ballgame. They'll call it third and, I guess that's third and 14. Six and a half minutes, the clock is still running. Anderson's getting loud, three wide, two to the near side. Back is behind Washington in the pistol. The snap, and the handoff goes to Dunlop. Stiff arms, one tackler, tries to spin out of a second, unable to do so. Back to the line of scrimmage will bring up fourth and 14. 6.07 on the clock. Del Valley will send out their punting unit. Not a bad offensive series there for our Cardinals. They started this drive with about just under nine minutes to go. They're going to give it away here with about ten and a half minutes. Or excuse me, five and a half minutes. So they burned about three, three and a half minutes off the clock. They're bringing the house, and they punt, block the punt again. And the Trojans are going to scoop it off the turf at the Dell Valley 27. No, it was a scrum at the 25. We don't know who's got it just yet. The Trojans are happy about the block, but we don't know if the Trojans have either way. The Trojans are going to start this drive right at the Dell Valley 26-yard line. Again, bring in the house. Special teams unit for Del Valley, unable to get the punt away. And this sets up fantastic field position for the Trojans and what could be another fantastic ending to another great game. And it's odd because special teams for Del Valley last week were doing fantastic. And you hate to see such a big difference here. Two bad punts as we get ready to see what the Trojans got again. Handoff. New running back in the field this time, and he's going to make something happen with his legs. That looked like number 20, Jackson Green, on the carry for the Trojans. He's going to get about a seven-yard carry on that one. Brings up second and three and inside the red zone with five minutes left to go. Dunlop and Givens back out on the field. Excuse me, that's not Dunlop, that's Fulmer. And Givens gets the call. Rumbles ahead, tripped up after a two-yard carry. That's going to bring up third and one from the 17-yard line. 4.45 left to go in the ballgame. Del Valley still with a four-point lead, 14-10 your score. Now, last time we were in this uh, situation here, Del Valley was able to hold Anderson to just a field goal. Let's hope they can do it again. 4.28 and counting. Anderson breaks huddle. Wing T. A quick handoff up the middle. Stands Fulmer up and no gain on the play. That's going to stop him shy of the first down and bring up third, make that fourth and short with 4.15 left to go on the clock and the refs call a timeout to, for a measurement. Could you have any more drama to start district play? A yeah, four-point <laughs> ball game. You just had a, a run up the middle. It's going to, looks like, be shy of the first. I don't know. That's a, that's a spot for sure. The chain gang is about to get called out for an official measurement. It looks really close from what I've seen. There's a few Trojan players in the way of seeing where the ball's exactly at. They stretch the chain, but hold on a second. They need to redo that if you don't mind. The set, the the, the far chainman here wasn't down he had did not have the his chain down at the 26 yard line he was still had his chain up when they dropped the, the the first down chain and they call it good for a first down i man i wish somebody would have seen that other than me because that needs to be remeasured well there's a stadium full of people here hopefully yeah well else. <laughs> no instant replay and a hit on four in the backfield he comes up with a big loss of about four yards Big tackle Jayden there. Gilmore, big tackle. Man, getting in the backfield and doing a great job, making sure he held on 
and made some yards. Go back for the Trojans. Great job, man. Fulmer. Gil Go ahead. No. I was like, Gilmore with a great tackle. I like that. Great Ful job. Fulmer has been able to get out of those tackles all night, the shoestring ankle tackles, but this time, not this time, Gilmore. And another handoff goes to, no, it's a pass in the back of the end zone. Caught a touch. The Trojans, who have not thrown a pass almost all night, maybe two, for the Del Valley defense. Had us think and run the whole time, and their target, number five, Trevor uh, Merrick, senior wide receiver, gets past all the defenders, gets himself open, and over the shoulder catch in the middle of the end zone. Anderson now has a two-point lead with the extra point try coming up with 3.19 left to go in the ball game. Anderson 16, Del Valley 14. Thought you knew somewhere Anderson decided to pass. Had me tricked. The extra point attempt is about to happen, but we have a flag coming in. Delay a game going against the Trojans, so the extra point of try will become a little bit uh, more difficult, but not too much for the Trojans. As their kicker, number 52, I believe that's uh, who they're using as a kicker. He's got listed as Dehong Young, inside linebacker and running back for the Trojans. Getting some kicking duties here tonight. It gets blocked by your Del Valley Cardinals. So no good. So now we only have a two-point ball game, and then we have a flag coming in. So hold on one second as we get the call. More drama here on the field to start district play. Oh, offsides by the defense. So that'll move the Trojans back up to the extra point try original spot. So we have a wash penalty to penalty there. So ball gets spotted back at the three-yard line. And Deshaun, uh, Deshaun Young will get another opportunity. The snap, the kick is up, and this time it sails through. And now we have us a three-point ball game. Anderson 17, Del Valley 14. There's three minutes, 19 seconds on the clock, but hold your horses. The Trojans may be redoing this one again as another flag is down on the field. <coughs> Chop block against the Trojans. So the extra point try will be redone. This is this this is crazy. <laughs> I am um, <laughs> curious to see how many penalty yards this whole game has all together. This is uh, I would like to know how many penalty yards we have just on this extra point try. <laughs> 5, 10, 15. Actually, this is going to be. So, this is going to be 15 yards on the extra point try against. No, I'm sorry. This, Yeah, 15 yards against Tro Trojans to the Dell Valley 5 just on this extra point try. So, now the extra point try will be kicked from the 25 yard line for the Trojans. The snap, the hold, the kick is up. It's nicked. And goes dead before it hits the Tupperites. And another flag comes in. What is happening on this field right now, ladies and gentlemen? The flag is going to go against the Trojans. Del Valley is going to decline the penalty. It's another chop block. Wow. Declined. Extra point attempt is no good. So now we have us a two-point ball game. 16. 14 your score. Anderson Trojans on top of our Del Valley Cardinals. But hold on, folks. We still got three minutes and 19 seconds of ball game to play. The question here will be, how will Anderson kick this ball off? On side attempt? Will they do that short little or line drive kick on the field? Will they keep it in the air and float it up there and wait for their coverage team to get down there. They got a two-point lead. What would you do? What would you do, Robert? Onside kick. Why not? Oh, if you're the onside, if yeah. you're the special teams coach, you're saying kick it on sides, huh? Just keep the lead. All right. 
So Del Valley, well, I'm sure they'll kick it off. Sends out their special teams unit, their kick return unit. Back deep to return this one. He's been fantastic in the passing game today. Reggie Sims is all the way back at the 10. <clears throat> the ball is getting teed up at the 40, and Del Valley's waiting to see how the Trojans break their special teams huddle to determine. Oh, excuse me, to determine how they will uh, line up themselves, and they're going to line up like they're just going to kick it away. No onside try here, or at least that would what that's what they want you to believe. <laughs> They're keeping it away. And it is another low on the field kick. Scooped up at the 26-yard line, up to the 30. No contact yet. To the 40 on the sideline. Runs out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. Nice return there by Jacob Lopez, the junior wide receiver again. And he gets really close to midfield. They're actually going to spot him at midfield. So Del Valley. Great field position to start, and three minutes, ten seconds of play time. Wow, they're actually spotting him at the 45. So I guess the refereeing staff had to talk about it a minute. Three ten on the clock, 45-yard line, and one timeout. I believe no two timeouts remaining. Lots of time and two timeouts. This could be a very interesting ending here. The spread, three wide, two to the near side. Washington. With Dunlop to his left, hands it to Dunlop, finds a hole and rumbles ahead to the far hash marks. Going to get about a two-yard gain. Gets the clock turning, and it will make it a second and eight for the Del Valley Cardinals on their own 47-yard line. Dunlop, you can't say it enough. Great, great power runner. I have to admit I'm a little surprised here. Coach is not in a hurry at all to break this huddle. The team at 242. Three wide, two to the near side. Same setup as before. Washington. And gives it to Dunlop again, who rumbles up the middle. He's going to stop at about the 50-yard line, maybe just shy of the 50. That'll bring up third and about four, make that five and a half. 2.22 left to go in this ball game. They're going to mark him at the 49-yard line. Six yards to a new set of downs. 2-11 on the clock. Play is called in. Two minutes. Ten seconds on the play clock. Three wide. Caleb Burton to the top all by himself. The snap to, to Washington. Looking to his left. Throws to his left. And picked off by the Trojans. It's going to go back for a pick six. Untouched. 140 on the clock, and the Trojans have just taken a giant lead over the Del Valley Cardinals. Camarion Langford, the junior defensive back, read the eyes of Elijah Washington the all the way, headed over here to the near side and stepped right in front of that pass. And 49-yard interception return for a touchdown. Wow. 22, 14 your score right now. Extra point try coming up here for the Trojans with 138 left to go in this ball game. Hopefully there's no penalties here on this extra point. <laughs> yeah, right. The kickoff is up. It sells through. 23, 14 your score. We have it's a nine point ball game with 138 left to go. Crazier things have happened, Dell Cardinal fans, so don't give up just yet. We're going to take a real quick commercial break, and when we come back, the finale here at Nelson Field with 138 left to go. Anderson Trojans 23, Del Valley 14, and you're hearing it proudly and very excitedly right here on the KMAX Sports Network. This is the KMAX Sports Network, and this is what we do. Looking left, throws into the end, it's snap open. again, he hits the turf, and Del Valley gets it's a pin and with it. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at GameAxports.com or Chuck at GameAxports.com to find out how. Side, he's got blockers in front of him. Touchdown. Touchdown. Five. Touchdown. Yes, sir. It's what we do. And nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. Follow all the game day action right on our Twitter feed, at KMAX Sports.
Welcome back live here at Nelson Field and on the KMAX Sports Network. You're listening to the Hendricks Motor Company broadcast of Dell Valley Cardinal football. 138 left to go here in the ball game. It's Thursday night under the lights. The Anderson Trojans just took a big lead after an interception over the Dell Valley Cardinals. 23-14 is your score. The kickoff just now stopped as it looks like the Anderson Trojans called a timeout. Did they really call a timeout right before they kicked off the ball to us? I guess the... The play clock was coming to zero. I'm not sure, but that's going to only leave them with one timeout remaining. Robert, nine-point lead or a nine-point ball game right now. There's just over a minute and a half, 138 left to go in the ball game. They're getting the ball back. The Dell Valley Cardinals are getting the ball back here. A couple of big plays could put us in scoring position pretty quickly. It's high school football. Anything's possible. How are you feeling right now? Are you a little nervous? Are you a little disappointed? I mean, what are you feeling? I am nervous. I am nervous. I, I, I saw where, <clears throat> excuse me, where the pass was read. Um, Trojans, I'm not going to lie, great job with the interception. But, uh, man, I, I'm telling you, it, it was very unexpected. And I don't have any um, doubt in my mind. There's still a little less than a minute, less than a, uh, two minutes on the clock. We still have a timeout left, I think, and uh, two, as a matter of fact, like you said, we've seen uh, more unbelievable stuff happen here with Del Valley Cardinals, so don't count them out just yet. Cameron Langford with a big pick six there for the Trojans. Hey, he had a two-point lead. Now it's a nine, and here comes the kickoff again on the turf, bouncing it all the way up to the 27 where it's recovered, and it's being brought up to the 35, and staying in bounds, pushed backwards. They're going to give him forward momentum at the 34. No whistle just yet. The uh, ref here on the near side sideline is saying the Del Valley player was down at the 34, so the Trojans running the ball back, trying to uh, extend that lead, but it's not happening. So Del Valley, 127 left to go. We'll start here on their own 34-yard line. They have two timeouts on the clock and a nine-point deficit to make up. Not the easiest thing to do, but like not, you said. But not impossible. But not impossible. You've got to play till that clock hits zero, like we saw first week. Check. Del Valley breaks the huddle, spread formation, two wide receivers to either side, and Dunlop offset to the left of Washington. The snap, looking to throw and does. No, pop fake, then to the near side, in and out of the hands of Caleb Burton. So that'll bring up second and 10 for the Del Valley Cardinals and also stops the clock on the incomplete pass at 121. Normally don't see that by Caleb Burton. Usually has good hands on the ball. Del Valley breaks the huddle. Second and 10. Their own 34-yard line. Spread formation. Four wide, two to either side. Dunlop to the left of his quarterback. Little adjustments being made by the wide receiving court. The snap, Dunlop to block. The pass over the center field, caught at the 50 and taken down hard, but not until the first down was made. Great catch there by Reggie Sims. His number's been called a few times tonight, and he is definitely yes, going to be an offensive player here tonight for the Dell Valley Cardinals. An offensive standout player is what I meant to say. Four wide again, same setup. The snap, Dunlop to block. Again, the throw to the near side, caught and shoved out of bounds at the catch. The referee says no catch is, unfortunately, Jacob Lopez, he caught the ball, but couldn't get a foot down before getting shoved out of bounds. So that'll bring up second and 10 from the 50. One minute left to go here in the ball game. Four wide again, two to either side. Dunlop in the backfield, the snap. Washington to throw, near side, up high, off the fingertips of Caleb Burton. Safely falls to the turf, and that will bring up third and 10 with 56 seconds left in the ballgame. 
again, you talked about it before, that you should play to the very end because you never know what happens in, say, football. Third and 10, 50 yard line, four wide. Washington to throw again over the center of the field and picked off one more time. Bringing it up to the 45 midfield. Now in Del Valley territory at the 30 yard line. He may take it all the way back, but no way. Del Valley from behind. There's a flag coming in late. But as it stands right now, the Trojans will start from the Del Valley 17 yard line. And another hat gets thrown as a flag comes in. So hats, flags, bean bags. <laughs> oh my. Lots to talk about between this uh, officiating crew. Trying to get everything sorted out with what happened at the end of that return from the Trojans on the pickoff. Personal foul going against the Del Valley Cardinals. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike against the Dead Val uh, Del Valley Cardinals. And it's going to be a first down for the Trojans. So Del Valley getting picked off with 40 seconds left in the ball game. Cameron Langford with two picks here late in the game. One of them going all the way back to a pick six. The other one, after a penalty, half the distance to the goal, it was going to be at the 16-yard line. Now Del Valley is going to set up. Wow. Del Valley defense with 40 seconds left to go here in the ball game, will have a very, very short field to defend. They put the ball at the four and a half yard line. The Trojans come out, big formation. The snap, they pitch it back to Fulmer. Fulmer's got a hole and goes and catches the corner for another score for the Anderson Trojans. 29, 14 your score, Anderson on top. Extra point try coming up with 33 seconds left to go. Del Valley, after some big penalties here today and some unfortunate events on the passing game, two picks being our two passes getting picked off late here in the game. The Anderson Trojans look like they have put the proverbial nail in the coffin in this one tonight, folks. The kick is true. So now you're looking at a 30-14 ball game. Dell Valley trailing this one by 16 points. Robert, we talked about that moment when the SWAT style kick in the door moment happens. We thought we had it when we scored there late in the third quarter. Right. Unfortunately, Anderson brought a bigger battering ram. And a uh, couple of picks. Cameron Langford. Man, he came out of nowhere tonight, too. Cameron wasn't, we didn't call his name much, didn't see his number in too many plays. But when his defense and the uh, Trojans needed him, he stepped up big. So that's where we're sitting right now. Two big interceptions by Cameron Langford has put the Del Valley Cardinals in a very uncomfortable position at 30 to 14 against the Anderson Trojans with. 33 seconds left to go in the ball game. As it sits right now, Del Valley will be starting the season, starting district play with a loss and sitting at 2-1 and one on the season. The Trojans looking things over, making sure everybody's ready to go, and the kickoff stays on the turf again, scooped up at the 31-yard line, looking for a hole and unable to find it. That's going to be the returner, number 26, Najari Johnson. 
So they're going to actually stop him. Uh, they're going to push him backwards. They're going to give uh, Del Valley starting field position. Somewhere around the 27, 28 yard. Oh, okay. They are going to give him uh, where he scooped it up at the 34. So I thought they were going to give him a negative yards there on that return. Good hustle. My Del Valley. 23 seconds left for the game. 14 to 30. Five wide. Trips to the far side. Elijah Washington looks like he's going to be throwing the ball. He does on the screen to the near far side. Uh, makes a break and up to the 45, up to the 50, and runs out of bounds at the Trojan about 46, 47 yard line. So that was a great little screen pass there. And again, Reggie Sims getting his number called. Fifteen seconds left on the clock after running out of bounds to stop it. Reggie Sims doing a great job from the slot position. Five wide trips to the near side on this one. Reggie again in the screen, but this time on the near side. Up to the 45, the 40, maybe the 41 before he gets shoved out of bounds. Still be close to a Dell Valley first down. Be about a yard shy. Stops the clock with nine seconds. They're not stopping. They're playing. Del Valley still playing hard here, trying to make the uh, Trojan defense wonder what's happening next. Again, break the huddle from the spread with five wide, three to the top. The snap to Washington. Looks to throw on the far side. Near side it does. It is Caleb Burton. Got a bounds at the 29. Good for a first. Five seconds on the clock. The clock is stopped again. Del Valley, believe it or not, with five seconds and two timeouts, could actually get another score on the board. Now at the Trojan 29-yard line. Oh, and a timeout being called on the field by the Del Valley Cardinals. Five seconds on the board. Now, here's a question for you, Robert. All right. Cardinals, unfortunately, after penalties on that last offense possession for the, the Trojans, ended up the Trojans ended up with the ball on our four yard line. Not that I was, with 40 seconds left on the clock, very could have very easily taken a knee, started the clock, ended the ball game. Instead, they elected to run a play, handed it off to Fulmer. Fulmer finds the inside corner of the end zone, extends their lead a little bit more. Do you, as a football fan? Not a Del Valley Cardinal broadcaster, but as a football fan, find that as running up the score? Or do you find that as playing a game until the clock strikes zero? I'd say playing the game. Okay. Fair enough. The timeout is over. Five wide trips to the top. Washington in the shotgun. Snap. Looking to the right. Back to the left. Throws it deep to the end zone. Looking for Caleb Burton. And it falls safely to the turf. Off the fingertips. And that will be the ball game. 30 to 14, Del Valley will come out of Nelson Field with an unfortunate loss to the Anderson Trojans to start district play in 25-6A. The teams are meeting at midfield. We're going to give some love to the sponsors because we know if it wasn't for them, these broadcasts wouldn't happen. Stay right here, Cardinal fans. We're going to give you our post-game wrap-up talk about what's going to happen next week with our first home game of the season for the Dell Valley Cardinals back at Veterans Memorial. We hope you've enjoyed the broadcast so far. This is the Hendricks Motor Company broadcast of Dell Valley Cardinal football coming to you very proudly right here on the KMAX Sports Network. BMW of South Austin and Audi South Austin are proud title sponsors of Cardinal Athletics. Located near IH35 and Stastny Lane, Hendrick Automotive offers two premier facilities featuring over 500 new vehicles, along with our award-winning manufacturer certified service centers. Being focused on people by serving our teammates, our customers, and our community is what sets this dealership apart. People are our most important asset. Come Super Smiles Dental Center is a proud sponsor of Cardinal Athletics. We're a family-owned dental office dedicated to providing affordable, quality dental care. 
We accept Medicaid, CHIP, and most PPO insurance plans. We also offer 0% down and 0% financing on all dental services. We have a convenient office serving Del Valley families located at the corner of Ross Road and Highway 71. Call 512-247-6000 or go to supersmilestexas.com to make it a Thinking about college but you don't know where to start? Austin Community College is here to help. Call or visit ACC's College Destination Center now to talk one-on-one -on -one with enrollment advisors about your goals and everything you need to get your college plans on track. It's never too early to start. Whether you want to earn a degree, train for a career, or get ahead with transfer classes, ACC offers personalized assistance with applications, financial aid, and more. Visit us at austincc.edu slash start now or call 512-223-7747 to learn more. ACC, start here, get there. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. And while all of us at the KMAC Sports Network are huge football fans, we broadcast more than just football, you know. In fact, KMAC Sports proudly broadcasts volleyball, girls and boys basketball, softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and more. For more information on how you can help KMAC Sports broadcast any of those sports, just reach out to chuck at kmacsports.com or merle at kmacsports.com or contact that sports booster club directly. KMAC Sports will gladly work with you and the booster clubs to get that team's broadcasts on the air. And if you're a fan of the other team, well, we can broadcast your team's games too. We realize that, yes, even in Texas, there's more to life than just football. KMAX Sports, bringing your teams to you for 14 years. Welcome back to the KMAX Sports Network. This is the Hendricks Motor Company broadcast of Del Valley Cardinal Football, and we want to thank Super Smiles Dentistry as well as Beyond the Move Realty. And, of course, we want to thank Austin Community College. All of these great sponsors are uh, what make these broadcasts possible throughout the season. So, guys, please look them up. See if any one of them can help you out with anything you may be looking for, whether it be a car, a brighter smile, a new house, or or just trying to extend your education or, or get a degree in something. So we, uh, we want to thank everybody for tuning in as well, fans and, 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 and uh, KMAC supporters. Without you guys, we wouldn't be up here in the roost either. Robert, tough loss here tonight to start uh, district play for the Dale Valley Cardinals. 30-14 to 14 the final. The Cardinals, unfortunately, uh, unable to recover from two really big interceptions here late in the ball game. one of them resulting in a pick six when it was only a two-point ball game. Uh, they were on the move, trying to make uh, get into field goal position. They even win it by one point would have been good. The uh, football gods decided we may not get any rain, but Del Valley doesn't get a win tonight either. Your thoughts on the game tonight? I think uh, Del Valley did very well, actually. I think the pick six towards the end of the game was just read a little bit wrong. Um, just one step, a little too slow, really, is what happened. Uh, Washington had great speed great everything on the ball wide receiver was uh the receiver was there to catch it the defender was just one step ahead of the uh del valley sorry yeah, yeah the wide just team, yeah. just one step ahead and i mean that's all it was the other the other pick it i mean you're you're just coming off of a pick six and you got to maintain momentum still with only seconds left on the clock another one comes down the field um it, it, it's it's a little discouraging, but Del Valley actually maintained very well all the way up until the final seconds, all the way up until zero, and uh, that I'm, I'm not disappointed. Very proud of Del Valley, all the adjustments they made, and again, just one, two steps, uh, just a little behind, and slipped out of our hands. 
Nonetheless, great yep. playing by Del Valle. Yeah, Del Valle did play well tonight. The defense, I felt like, kind of took a, not necessarily a step backwards, but maybe a step sideways. There wasn't a whole lot of improvement from last week to this week. Uh, but they still played extremely well. They stepped up when they needed to. Secondary stepped up nicely. Right. Uh, offensively, I think we did really well. I think Dunlop is turning into one of the one of those all-around great running backs that Del Valley's gotten used to seeing, like in Cameron Wilkins' size, speed, and power. Um, it will be good to uh, get him a little bit more support. It looks like uh, Elijah Washington and, and uh, Tavi Dunlopper are the workhorses in the, in the backfield with their legs. It would be good to, uh, you know, see uh, um, Marcus Barr back on the field soon, maybe even uh, seeing Tommy Rivers getting a little bit more time at the running back position. Didn't see Eli Mendoza carrying the ball much tonight either. So not sure what's happening with the running back core and our stable back there, but two le- two sets of legs tonight still did a fantastic job. Eli, or excuse me, Elijah Washington, as usual, playing big and playing well at the quarterback position. And, Man, can you not talk about the gameplay of Reggie Sims tonight playing at the slot Reggie position? Reggie Sims doing very for well. For the Dell Valley Cardinals. Man, if he keeps that kind of gameplay up for the rest of the season, that's going to open up this passing game a lot for the Dell Valley Cardinals. Eddie Dawson yes. on the line, making big moves, breaking through the line, drawing a penalty later in the game to help Dell Valley out. And then you have Anthony Key and Chris Reed making some great tackles between the both of them during this game too so great job by the defense all the way around we had uh, one other game being played in 25 6 a tonight and that was west lake at akins the final there tonight akins getting blanked at home 67 nothing by the west lake chaparrales unbelievably though they're sitting at 2-1 and one on the season they lost their second game of the season their last game before district play against the akins eagles so Del, uh, the Westlake Chaparrales showing that they do have a little kink in their armor, so to speak. Uh, the Del Valley Cardinals were sitting at 2-1 and one on the season with 0-1 in district play. And the uh, Trojans of Anderson, 2-1 in, uh, and one on the season and now 1-0 and in district play. They lost their home opener, a very, very close one, 21-20 to McCallum, and won their second game against Rouse and another close one, 25-20. So another great close game by both these teams unfortunately for the Ardell Valley Cardinals they were just unable to come away with the win next week though we're back at home Veterans Memorial Stadium we couldn't be happier after a grueling three week road grind brother are you not happy to be back up at the roost I am I am I'm excited it will be homecoming like you said yep it'll be a good one yeah we have to face off against the Bowie Bulldogs so not exactly, uh, you know, going to be one of those walkover wins or, or even a walkover game for that matter. But the Bowie Bulldogs coming into town next week to face off against our Dell Valley Cardinals. They face off against Lake Travis tomorrow. Uh, so keep your eyes on that ball game, and you can probably catch some of it, if not all of it, right here on the KMAC Sports Network. The, uh, the Bowie Bulldogs. Uh, this thing's loading her up real slow. Trying to get some real quick particulars on them. They're 2-0 and right now in the season. Won their first one against Pflugerville. Panthers 45-13. And last week against San Antonio Madison 49-22. So Lake Travis may be in for a dogfight. Right. We'll, uh, we'll be keeping our eyes on it. Any closing thoughts before we get out of here, brother? Like I said, proud of the Cardinals. Even though they seem like you know points on the board doesn't amount to how well they played today. Surprisingly came out. Uh, little little jittery just first series did well on defense again lots of key players today doing fantastic things line improving defense like you said making lateral you know improvements and um, you know offense making a tremendous tremendous uh, uh, different scenarios for themselves and uh, you know they just again just one step just too slow right here in the fourth quarter but i mean they did great i'm not gonna you know like i said i'm not disappointed at all they did great Dell valley cardinals next week at home at veterans memorial stadium we'll be bringing it to you live right here on the kmac sports network and luckily we'll be doing it friday night under the lights traditionally like it should be for texas high school football we hope you enjoyed the broadcast uh from my broadcast partner robert rodriguez our qa back at kmac studio Rosie uh, Bega, who did a fantastic job tonight. Thank you so much, Rosie. 
and for all the ownership at uh, the KMAC Sports Network, our broadcast uh, uh, director, Merle Bertrand, technical support by J.B. Uh, Baeza, and technical uh, director, Suna Vernkat. For Robert Rodriguez, I'm Daniel Chancellor, your play-by-play commentator. Live here from Nelson Field, where our Del Valley Cardinals dropped a heartbreaker here, 30-14 to to start district play in 25-6A to the Anderson Trojans. Until next week, be safe out there. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy some great games right here on the KMAC Sports Network tomorrow night. And until next week for the Del Valley Cardinals, good night, everybody.